Right, right players, it's the uh, referee's coming, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello everybody and welcome back to Borough Radio. My name is James McIntosh and it's just minutes until kickoff. Gosport come off of a poor defeat to Basingstoke, losing 3-0 and we will be hoping to get back to winning ways. As for the away side, they have only achieved two from a possible six points and will be looking to improve. In goal, two, Josh McCormick, three, Daniel King, four, Daniel Jones, five, All right. 10, Simba and Man Lambo, and 11, Trevor Carbon. And your Gosport lineup today see Toby Stewart starting goal, 2, Harry Kavanagh, 3, and your captain, Rory Williams, 4, Corey Jordan, 16, Zach Sharp, 15, Christian Campbell, 7, Bradley Tarbuck, 20, Alex Barca, 19, Danny Hollins, 9, Dan Wooden, and 18, Rafa Ramos. And today it only marks one change from our last lineup, which sees injured Alex Barca come back to the start in 11. And it's a much welcomed 11. So it's going to be a good game today. And like I just mentioned there, Winchester, they'll be hoping to find some form after only picking up a two out of a possible last six points. And as for gospel, we come off an impressive, well, not an impressive, a disappointing loss to Basingstoke. And we'll be hoping to win today and get back to our second place spot, which we already are at. And Jeremy, what are you expecting from the game today? They look like a good team, the visitors. Tough game. Won't be easy. I can tell you that now. They've got a knack of upsetting the top team. So uh, it's going to be hard. Don't expect anything else. Expect a scrappy physical game as well. But it's a must win for Gospel after Friday. They have to win this, really. Well, I'll run you through the lineups one more time for the people just tuning in now. For Winchester, it's Luke Kearney in goal, two Josh McCormick, three Daniel King, four Daniel Jones, five Stuart Mott, six Patrick Nolan, seven Max Smith, eight Jamie Barron, nine Thomas Wright, ten Semba and Lambo, and eleven Trevor Carbon. And your Gosport lineup sees Toby Stewart starting goal, two Harry Kavnart, three your captain Rory Williams, four Corey Jordan. 16, Zach Sharp, 15, Christian Campbell, 7, Bradley Tarbuck, 20, Alex Barster, 19, Danny Hollins, 9, Dan Wooden, and 18, Rafa Ramos. And it's going to be Gosport shooting from my right to left and Winchester vice versa. But I'm sure many of you will know a lot of the Winchester players, and you probably know who their manager very well. He's an experienced manager at this level, Craig Davis, and a former Gosport captain. He took the reins at Winchester in 2017 and has gradually helped them to secure good league and cup runs. And one FA Cup campaign which saw Winchester face the likes of Torquay and Bath so they've got a good manager on side Winchester and like I said he's a familiar face around here isn't he Jeremy? Absolutely he is Craig yeah was here as a player for about five years very popular in his time here and he's a he's a, he's a young manager sort of uh, and he's learning his craft but it's 
I think there's no better place for him to do that at Winchester. And a lot of people wrote them off when they were promoted into this division last year. But, uh, well, they've, they've had great mm. joy in rubbing those dimensions <laughs> in the dirt. And uh, they're just a strong, solid outfit. And Pat and Joe would have probably need to have done their homework. You've got a couple of Exboro players in there. So, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a degree of familiarity about it as well. Well, they're a team that likes to shock these bigger teams. I remember not so long ago, it was Walton and Hersham they nicked a point off of. I'm pretty sure they even nicked a point off of Chesham, the league leaders, which just goes to show they're a giant killer. They're David and we're the Goliath. So maybe they can take a point. And if they do even get a point today, it's going to be detrimental to Gosport. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, but that's what Winchester are going to want to do, come here and get a result. And um, they've got a lot of fans here who have made the short trip down. It's good to see. But uh, Goss will have to win this. Obviously, it wasn't their best day on Friday, on Good Friday at Basingstoke. But the results and the sequence of results played into mm. our hands. But what that means is we need a result of our own today. If we can achieve that, then hopefully Basingstoke do us a favour at uh, Salisbury and Walton do us a favour at Tottenham as well. And that just leaves us with a little less to do to book our playoff place. Well, we're going to keep you up to date with all the other scores in the Southern Premier League, along with looking at some of the ones from the National League South above and maybe some of the results under as well. But it's going to be Winchester kicking off the half as Carbon passes it back to Barron. And we're underway here at the AEI Stadium with, like I said, Winchester kicking it off. And it's Nolan at the back coming forward. And Nolan, he's an experienced defender at this level. One of the many players who's been at Winchester for a number of years. He's played 34 times this season, the defender, and even scoring five and it's a real Winchester side that for me they don't really seem to gather too many goals they almost play for the draw and that's how they achieve most of these points or maybe look for that loose goal well I think to be fair they what they what they excel in is just being a solid robust team and maybe some would say they're not the biggest goal scorers maybe you would say they're not the most entertaining but you cannot argue against their record against the top six Gosport of course we're lucky to get away from Winchester with a draw on New Year's Day that was close because I mm. thought we were going to lose up there. Um, but that's what they do and that's what they excel at. And I don't see any other sort of uh, game this afternoon for Gosport to contend with. Well, yeah, we did play them and that was our first game of 2024. And it was only until the 94th minute where we found the equaliser. But to me, it looks as though that's Corey Jordan down. So that's a pretty scary scene to be fair quite early on if Corey Jordan down I'm not even sure we have any really defensive substitutes maybe Finn Walshsmith but Finn, yeah. um, not really too experienced at this level for me no, well the problem with Gosport is that they've had a number of defensive injuries this year not least Harry Medway and uh, and then obviously Joe Morrison a couple of weeks ago and they are light at the back but the good news is that Charlie Wasma should be making his return away at Hamwell on Saturday. So that'll be like a new signing. But he's all right. He's fine. Well, you have Kavanaugh whipping in a deep ball and it might just find the run of Christian Campbell, but cannot get to the ball first. He does. He headers it down, but he finds the run of Alex Barca, who returns from injury today. Now Christian Campbell down on this left-hand channel, around 20 yards out from goal. Christian Campbell trying to turn and he does well to get a pass across to Rafa Ramos, but Rafa just loses it there to more. And now Bradley Tarbuck immediately wins it back for Borough. Tarbuck, back to Corey Jordan, just outside of the central circle, out wide to Kavanaugh in this right-hand pocket, back to Corey Jordan, Jordan, back to Zach Sharp in his own half. Gosport fans, you're going to have to make sure to tune in later, as I will be catching up with Zach Sharp, the manager of the under-18s, and Jeremy, it's the under-18s and the under-19s, they've been smashing it recently, the under-18s particularly, they've gone champions, and I believe they're at home this Saturday, and if they win, we've gone invincible, the under-18s. Can't say more than that. I think you're coming <laughs> up. It's, uh, it's lovely to see such a bright future at this football club. And the better, the thing that's better for me is that a few of those under 18s have already played first team this year. Mm -hmm. um, and they've looked very, very composed against senior opponents. So it can only bode well. Well, Henry Sell is going to be that other man I'm speaking to earlier. But for now, we're just going to focus on this game as Alex Barca tries to thread across into Christian Campbell. And Christian Campbell doing well just to get on the end of it near this left hand corner flag. And he does whip in a ball, takes a reflection off of Mott, and it will go out for a Gosport corner. And Jeremy, from the last couple of games, Gosport, they haven't been the best involved in these set pieces. Do you think it's something they've been working on in the training ground they recently? Need they need to have done because I'll tell you what. It's, it's a sort of a blunt weapon you can use against teams that are defensively frail. So let's see what happens here. Well, it's going to be Harry Kavanagh taking the corner. And it looks as though it's going to be most of our front players in the box. It's only Tarbark, Alex Bass and Rory Williams not in the Gosport box. 
But Harry Havenard just lifting the hand, signalling he's going to take it. And it's a deep one and it's punched away by Kearney there in goal. But it's going to fall to Corey Jordan just outside of the box. Corey Jordan trying to whip in a ball, but instead takes a flick off of King. But still stays in Gosport possession just outside of the central circle. It's Tarbuck and he, not a great pass, but somehow it still manages to work its way onto Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh with a cross, but just too much power. Nearly finding the run of Alex Barca there, but it looks as though that would have been offside regardless. And it's going to have to be Kearney starting from the attack. And it's been Gosport all in the first five minutes as it's Gosport nil, Winchester nil. Winchester coming down this right-hand channel. It's M. Lambo passing it back to King. Now King. Winchester just passing it out from the back. And maybe you might hope to re-counter here. Just by that Harry Mitson stand. And we've seen a lot of work being done on this Harry Mitson stand. A lot of new signs come up. And we want to say a massive thank you to all the volunteers who have helped Gosport involved in this signs. We'll grab a word with Jeremy about it in a minute. Oh, I was just saying about the signs to the viewers. We've had a lot of volunteers come in and help with the signs. And it's just made the stands look even better. The whole ground looks amazing. If you look around, there's so many more advertising boards. And yes, the volunteers came in on Thursday, armed with their drills. <laughs> and uh, and they did a fantastic job of putting all the new signage up. It looks amazing. Well, yes, yeah, just once again showing how good our fan base is and voluntary base. And it makes it even nicer today when it's a nice sunny day, the sun's out. And let's just hope it's a good game of football. As Nolan just nearly losing it. And he does place a misplaced pass. Gosport on the attack. It was Rafa Ramos coming forward, but he placed a misplaced pass into Nolan. And now Winchester coming forward. It's Carbon in the just the left-hand side of the corner of the box. Nolan trying to wriggle his way. And he goes for a shot, dragging one just wide at the top corner. And it's a missed opportunity there from Carbon. Probably rather should have looked for the pass than the shot. Yeah, the angle was tight for him. I mean, he had two or three teammates arriving to his right-hand side. Um, yes, but uh, he obviously felt he had the best sort of uh, opportunity there. Um, but yeah, nil-nil, five minutes gone. Well, it's going to be a goal kick, which has been already taken. Rory Williams lifting the ball forward into Harry Kavanagh in this left-hand channel. Kavanagh calling for options to come close to him, but he's going to have to pass it to Jordan, the only man behind him and the only man unmarked. And it's Winchester applying heavy pressure to the Gosport defence and forcing the mistake. As nearly, it was nearly McCormick who got on the end of it. Now it's Campbell racing down this left-hand channel. Campbell up against Wilson. And that's a brilliant turn there from Campbell. Oh. Campbell playing in a low-driven pass, but it finds no Gosport bodies. But still, the clearance has been won back by Gosport. Danny Hallens, Holland, sorry, in the middle of the Winchester box, passing it into Alex Barca. But Barca loses it into Nolan. And now Winchester might be able to counter-attack it as M. Lambo smashes one forward and might just find the run. Can it find the run of M. Lambo? It's a good touch from M. Lambo. And he goes for a shot, but nowhere near enough power to cause Toby Stewart any power. And in the end, it just goes down the keeper's throat. I think it just shows he was uh, surprised by the sort of the situation he found himself in there. Mm. And didn't get the contact on the ball that he would have liked. Just going back to Campbell. Oh, Williams plays a lovely pass into Tarbuck. Tarbuck in the box and he is brought down. Will the referee blow up for it? To me, it looked no, as though he no, went down too well easily no. there. No, there was, there was contact, but it was certainly not a penalty for me. And I have to hand it to uh, Dan King. That was mm. outstanding defending there, the number three. Just got across him, made sure he was going absolutely nowhere. Ball ran out for a goal kick. Down went our player, but yeah, no no penalty for me. Just want to come back to the Campbell run down the left there. That was outstanding football mm. from Christian. End the threat that Winchester posed, nearly created one of her own. But then I think he'll be disappointed with the final pass, mm. which is a bit poor, but... Lovely phase of play down this left-hand side. Well, he's only been here for a couple, I want to say months now, Christian Campbell. But since joining, he's just looked so in control of everything. And for me, even though he's only been here for a short period of time, he's looked to say he's one of our star men. He's offered balance, hasn't he? He's, and look out. Okay. Oh, and it's Rafa Ramos intercepting oh, nice. a ball 20 yards out from goal and he has to pass it back to Harry Kavanagh. Harry Kavanagh coming down this right hand channel. He's got Tarbuck next to him and he does go for that option. Back to the right back in Kavanagh. Kavanagh trying to get past King but he has to pass it back to Zach Sharp and Sharp plays the pass into Christian Campbell in this left hand channel just by the Winchester dugout. Campbell up against McCormick. Campbell passes it back to Danny Hollins. It was a hard pass, but the midfielder does well just to keep it under control there and it's gone all the way back to Toby Stewart in goal. Stewart into Sharp. 
and Gosport, they're going to have to play it out from the back and try and rework another attack. But like I said, it's just been Gosport all in the first eight minutes. And we've looked solely in control. And as I do say that, Rafa Ramos, he was fed a ball, but just in an offside position. And he gives Winchester a chance just to have a free kick and maybe re-counter. It's Christian Campbell with a charge down on McCormick and doing well, nearly forcing him into a mistake. But he has one Gosport a throw thanks to the misplaced pass from McCormick. Williams with the throw in his own half, passing it into Hollins. Hollins whipping a ball into Kavanaugh in the Winchester half. And it has been a clash of heads, but... Oh, no, Kavanaugh does stay down. It was a clash of heads there between King and Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh stays down, and it looks as though the physio is going to have to come on for Gosport. Yeah, it looks like Olivia's uh, ready to go if she's called upon. But is he going to be OK? She's sort of just on the touchdown waiting to be called on, but... Yeah, again, though, um, Winchester are very robust defensively. And mm. uh, Harry Cav certainly felt that one. No foul or anything. It was just robust defending. But he's back. It's fine. On we go. Nil-nil. No goals in the Southern Premier League anywhere else. So we're still keeping an eye on a couple of the other teams. I'd say the big game we're looking at today is the Chesham game particularly. That could have massive repercussions. But it's Rafa Ramos winning the ball in the left-hand channel just outside of the box. Whips in the ball and it nearly causes trouble for the Winchester keeper in Kearney. He has to get down low, smothers the ball. Otherwise, it looked as though Dan Wooden was going to get on the end of that there. Kearney stumbles, um, just lost his footing, stumble, went down. But Rafa... Um, it's sort of fire fighting fire there because Rafa's quite a physical player and I think he'll have a, a part yeah. to play. But here come Winchester. And it's Barca losing the ball to Mlambo. Mlambo coming down just outside of the box, trying to dance his way through the box and he can't get past Zach Sharp. And that's good defending there, just tracking back, making sure he can progress any further before lobbing a ball out. And that's good defending there from Sharp. Absolutely, yeah. Zach's uh, having a game, a good game thus far. Ten minutes gone, but... Uh, yeah, I'm just looking around the ground, James. This is an amazing <laughs> attendance. I reckon we've broken the thousand barrier again this afternoon. Well, that shadow of a doubt. Definitely. Yeah. We saw a thousand plus when it was Winchester, and it looks as though it's the same case here today. I mean, and Salisbury. it's just uh, Salisbury, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. But no, it's good to see it. And for me, hopefully the attendances just keep growing now. You hope so. I mean, I, what I love is the the feel good factor we have here mm. at the moment, and um, we're seeing more people travel away from home. Uh, particularly at Paisley Stoke, I think we had nearly 300 fans up there. Yeah, right? yeah. No, it was good attendance. I was seeing a lot of good rivalry between the two sets of fans during that game. But like you said, we're starting to bring more away attendances now. And is this because of our form? Like, I've only been here since this season, but by the sounds of it, it wasn't too great to support the last couple of years uh, under different management schemes. I think there's a lot more enthusiasm this year. I think that's... Uh, they can see what's going on at the club. And I think that's a starting point. And then you add in the fact that we're, we're playing so well mm. at the moment overall. If you take out the odd one-off performance, it hasn't been so great. And the fans see that. And they see there's progress on and off the pitch. And they're getting behind it. Well, as we were talking there, it was Zach Sharp up against Ashton. And it did lead to Zach Sharp clearing one out. And it will be a Winchester corner as a result. It's going to be Jamie Barron taking it. And it's a short one out to their number two. Two whips in a ball and it might cause problem, but no, it doesn't. But oh. still short, and it was from M. Lambo there trying to club a shot towards the bottom corner, nearly causing Toby Stewart some damage there. But for me, it looked as though it was Corey Jordan who just did enough to get in the way of that shot yeah, there, just, just to take the way. power out. Just got in the way, blocked it, so it wasn't going very far. But Winchester having a good little spell here. Mm. Gosport needs to concentrate. Winchester thrown. It's a deep one, and it does find the head of Barron by the looks of it. And it's Jordan who clears it out before eventually. And it's going to be Smith chasing the ball down, passing it back to King. King whipping in a ball and it might just find the run of Baron, their skipper. But Kavanaugh does well to win it back. And he's going to lift the ball forward, trying to find Alex Barca, but instead finds Smott who headers it down. Winchester coming forward, Ashton leading the line, but Barca tugging and he does well to win it back in Winchester's own half. But the referee blows up for a Winchester foul and it's going to be King taking it. And I can just see there Joe Morrison yeah, Joe just Morrison. walking by the stand. Yeah. Luckily, he's um, it's no longer in a cast now, but still, a sad sight to see. He should be out playing today. It would have been nice to have had Joe out there, particularly in a game such as this. But uh, it's not to be, and hopefully we'll see him back here next season. Yeah, to be fair, a lot of players I'm hoping we see this season, but I'm going to talk about that a bit later as Winchester do have a free kick. Number five is brought down to the floor, but still, and Lambo gets ahead on the ball, just going once again straight down the throat of Toby Stewart and causing the keeper no problem, sir. No, Winchester, I think they're going to use their set pieces to try and upset us and trouble Gosport, but uh, not to be on that occasion. But Campbell here 
is I love the trickery that yeah. he comes up with. And uh, for me, so far, based on the first 13 minutes, he's had a good game. Mm, definitely. And it's Corey Jordan coming down this right-hand pocket, passing it back to Zach Sharp. He's got a lot of options ahead of him. You might have to choose a chip option, but a lot of players being marked. No, instead he goes for the low option into Bradley Tarbuck. Maybe a bit of a risky option with Smith on his trail, but Tarbuck does well to get a pass. Can Kavanaugh get on the end of this pass just outside of the box? Kavanaugh does well, and it's Rafa Ramos with a scissor kick, nearly forcing a sensational goal from the Portuguese there. Kearney has to get down low to deny the effort, but what a goal that could have been there from Rafa. Just look at the grin on his face there, Rafa. He loved it. He, all right, it was a good save from Kearney, but uh, Rafa Ramos grinning from ear to ear. He knows what he tried to do. <laughs> And on another day, that could have come off. But uh, you tweeting again, I am. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I shall hold the fort for the moment then. But Winchester just trying to come forward now through the middle. And uh, Gosford just tidying up at the back with Rory Williams. And looks to the left. There is Campbell. Now, Campbell has a little look up. What options has he got on? Not, not a lot. So he's going to try and carry the ball 15, 20 yards now. And stops on the left-hand side. Just has a look behind him. Williams has come up for support. But... Uh, Williams opts for the crossfield pass out to the right. Not his best. He'll be disappointed with that. Winchester intercepts and tried to start to build themselves. But uh, good rugged work from Jack Sharp there. Little header out wide. As Kavanagh out in the shadow of the Harry Mizzen stand just tucks the ball inside. Danny Hollands haven't seen a lot of him now on the ball. Gosport just short interchanging, passing play, just keeping possession, trying to fashion something. A diagonal ball out towards uh, Campbell. Now Campbell... Can he keep it? No, he can't. He's lost out there. Winchester come away and they're going to try and run the ball out of defence. Now, here come Winchester now down the right-hand side with uh, Trevor Caborn and just linking up well there with the number four, Dan Jones. Now, Lambo's the target up front, but Gosport tidy up defensively. And uh, you're back. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, yeah, like I said, it was nearly a moment of sensation there from Rafa Ramos. And I'm sure Gosport will be hoping for another one of those chances. It could have very yeah, well been goal of the season there. What they won't be hoping for is too many more passes like that. That's well, cool. it was Kavanaugh there with a the pass, easily intercepted by Ashton. And now Winchester coming forward. Ashton out wide into King. King playing as a left wing, left no, left back, left wing role today. And passes it into Jones. Jones from 25 yards out. Teeing up a shot. And that's a poor shot. Going miles a yard, miles wide, sorry, of Toby Stewart's right post. Had a bit of swerve on it. It was always going wide. But it started to come in, sort of swerve back in. But it's too late. That's comfortable. Comfortably wide there. But uh, it just reminds Gosport that if they don't concentrate, what could happen? Well, exactly. If they get caught on the, well, a catch, really. I think Winchester, that's where they're going to be looking to get that goal. Just when Gosport are going for the attack, they might be able to get that counter. That's and nothing. Exactly. That's what they did against Paul. I was watching when involving one of their highlights. They got quite a good goal. It was Lambo with a goal. And I would say for me, Lambo has to be their danger man. Playing oh, the yeah. number 10 today and has a lot of experience involved in this league. He's a veteran, been with Winchester for the last six seasons and joined when... Um, Craig Davis joined and for me Craig Davis is really the big brains of Winchester a lot of players have been there since the start of his reign and it seems as though a lot of these players like playing under him well that's managers for you isn't it you're either loyal to your manager and you're not and if you've got a whole group of players that are loyal to you then you're winning and uh and I've earlier I mentioned Craig and uh, the fact that he's learned his craft as a manager with Winchester and uh yes he, he's Oh, and that was close for Winchester there. It was nearly Carbon running onto the ball and nearly catching Gosport off guard. But Christian Campbell in this other flank of the pitch, he's doing well just to get past Mott there. And it's Gosport on this left wing ball. Danny Holland's currently still in his own half as he tries to chip a ball into Dan Wooden. Wooden headers it down to Rafa Ramos and he leaves it for Bradley Tarbar. Tarbar inside the Winchester box but loses it to Mott as he sticks in the foot and doing well enough just to get, catch the Gosport man off guard there. Yeah, good little move there from Gosport but Winchester did their defensive duty and uh, broke the move down. Campbell and Campbell, again. he's coming down this left-hand channel after winning the ball from Mott. Campbell with a ball in, nearly oh. finding Dan Wooden. The ball, just a bit too much pace on the ball. And Dan Wooden can't get on the end of it. But Gosport, they're looking amazing when going forward. And what, 
what? It's yeah. Campbell. He's their best outlet so far this afternoon. 17 minutes played, nil nil. But uh, he's their best mm, outlet. He's easily. The storming game. <laughs> well, they don't know what to do with him. I find Campbell and Rafa Ramos particularly, they seem to form a lovely combination when playing together. And that's why I was a bit shocked today when I saw Jake Cope not in the starting 11. Because I found it's Campbell, Jake Cope, and Rafa Ramos all in a little triangle formation. And those three love passing it to each other and creating those kinds of attacks. So were you a bit surprised today not to see Jake Cope on the starting 11? A little, but then you need to shake it up a little bit because Friday wasn't so great anyway. Mm. Well, it's Campbell taking a oh, distance, wow. sure. Around 30 yards out from goal, but Blazers won over the fence. And in the end, probably should have just taken a bit more time there, gone for accuracy rather than power. Yeah, that would look better placed at Twickenham, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. even managed to clear the defensive nets <laughs> behind the goal. But to be fair, you can't <laughs> criticise him because uh, he's had such a good game so far. Mm. And um, and also, you've got to give him credit for that low ball in that wouldn't, it evaded Wooden there. But just, yeah. What a chance on a plate that would have been. Well, Skerny with the goal kick now. And it might just fall to Dutchy Hollands, who does get ahead on it, but it's gone back to Winchester. It's just pinballing around in the centre of the pitch. But now Winchester coming forward with McCormick. McCormick trying to get past Christian Campbell, and he does do that. Getting past multiple bodies in yellow and still inside the gospel box, but just the run there, he's forced into making a goal kick and forced into running out of play there, thanks to good defending from Rory, Rory Williams and Danny Hollands. Um, we're just getting some intel that Rory might not be feeling the best on the pitch, so hopefully he's okay and we'll keep an eye on him. But going back to that chance there, yeah, the rut he just ran out of road, mm, simple yeah. as that. Um, so Stewart now with a goal kick. Well, he's looked good in the first 20 minutes, Rory Williams, but then so again, so is every gospel player. And in the Southern Premier League, I'll run you through some of the results, so I might have to leave that. It's Van Woodens chasing the ball down from Kearney, but in the Southern Premier League, a big result is Salisbury are losing 1 0 to Basingstoke. So Basingstoke doing us a massive favour. Plymouth nil, Paul Town nil, Murphy Town nil, Hungerford nil, Hayes and Yedden nil, Hen Hendon nil, and Harrow Borough won Chesham nil. So they might have to play Salisbury, and that could be the title deciding game so hopefully that continues going our way still nil nil here at the ai stadium dorchester nil tiverton nil did court nil swindon supermarine nil bracknell nil Sholin nil and aoc totten one walton and hersham nil okay. so other than that result all the other games are going in our favor okay yeah totten at home to walton that's a key one because walton are just outside the playoffs themselves so mm. they're going to want the result from that uh, yes, Basingstoke doing us the favour, but it is early, early, early days. Now, if they're still there at 90 minutes, I'll be happy with that. Well, let's just hope. We'll keep you up to date with all those scores in the Southern Premier League. But it's Corey Jordan just trying to get rid of the ball. But and Lambo chasing it down and it goes out for a goal kick thanks to the last touch from Lambo. Yeah, but, he's a nuisance, isn't he? He uh, is. But he's the sort of, sort of nuisance that you have to be very, very wary of. Um, but yeah, mm. looking at the first 20 minutes on reflection, nil nil here, it is. Um, Gosport have had the better of it, but Winchester, when they do go forward, do look dangerous, yeah. and you cannot give them a spare yard to work. Mm. Well, it's Christian Campbell playing a ball into Rafa Ramos, a good hor horizontal ball, but it's a heavy touch from the Portuguese as he loses it to Moore. And now it's Barron, the captain, going down and doing well to win Winchester a free kick. It's quickly taken, passed into Ashton, still in Winchester's half. Ashton coming forward, but he can't get past the dive in Danny Hollins, who sticks in the challenge. The referee does blow up. I oh, think, cool. yeah. I don't think the referee got a good view of that. Because... I think that was the wrong call there from yeah, the ref. Yeah, yeah, because Hollins won the ball. I, I... So, um, yes, he got the ball, but never mind. Uh, on we go. Gosport just need to get back and uh, do their defensive duties now. Well, it's McCormick coming forward in this right-hand flank, passing it into right there by the looks of it. I can't see his number on the back. But he passes it back to his captain in Barron. And it's gone out for throwing just by the Gosport dugouts. And it's going to be a Winchester throwing. And Jolie just going to give the player the ball there. And it's going to be Nolan taking it, the defender. Nolan, a ball into and Lambo just around 10 yards away from the gospel box. But Williams doing well to win a ball back. And it's going to be one down one and has to chase down. But it looks as though Mott's got to the ball first. And he passes it back to goalkeeper in Kearney. And Kearney shoves one away from the danger zone, back inside the Gosport half. Corey Jordan getting on the end of that clubbed ball away. Now Kavanagh still in Gosport's half, just outside of the central circle. 
out wide to Rory Williams. And it does look as though the danger has been escaped just for a couple of seconds. Gosport back on the attack. But that's a poor ball from Rory Williams there. Just trying to connect across there with the run of Dan Wooden. But instead finding Kearney in goal. All of a sudden we're going route one. And I don't like mm. it because it's not really working. If you keep the ball on the floor, stretch them. That's, you know, when Winchester get into their defensive posture and they get into their defensive lines, then we're going to have to sort of pass around them. But no, stop banging it over the top. It's not really working. Well, could this be a similar case to Basingstoke, where we were the front runners for the first 20 minutes and then we just seem to let it slip? We don't seem to have enough energy throughout the game. Well, you're, you're always going to have one-off poor performances, but you also need to hand it to Basingstoke. You've played really well on the day, as I understand mm. it. Um, I actually listened to the online commentary and I thought they deserve credit. Well, it's Tommy Wright coming forward, dancing his way inside the Gosport box. He does well enough just to get a shot across and it was just high of the top left corner. Yeah, that had swerve and bend on it, but unfortunately nowhere near the, the whites of the post there. And that's probably troubled the car or the van in the car park. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, to be fair, though, why did he? why was he given so much room to get the shot away? That's my concern there. Well, Tommy Wright, the former Haven and Water Leaval man, did help Haven and Water Leaval get that famous promotion. And I would imagine he was along the likes of Rory Williams and a lot of the gospel players. So he probably knows the area quite well, along with a lot of the players. Yeah, um, to be fair. And uh, we've got two or three ex Haven players in our side, of course. And uh, Rory was there when they went up and uh, spent a season in the Conference National with them. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's Kavanaugh coming forward, the former Pompey man. And it's Kavanaugh just trying to get past King. And it looks as though the step-overs do the trick, as he does do it. And manages to get a pass through to Bradley Tarbuck. Back to Kavanaugh, who whips in the ball. Finding the head of oh! Dan Wooden. And it hits the post. It looks as though it was going to be one of those headers that just didn't have enough power to get over the line. But it definitely did have enough power. But instead comes in contact with the post. And it's yet again came from another good Kavanaugh cross. Yeah, Harry, Harry Campbell, he gets it absolutely right. That those are very difficult to defend against. And... Uh, the, the, the header was soft. It almost just dropped gently, didn't it? Mm. it hit the post. Now, we've got a, an injury to Cable. Um, now, you're tweeting, so I'll just talk, talk the listeners through this. 25 minutes, nil-nil here at the AEI Stadium. Now, Cable of Winchester is down. Doesn't hit you too badly hurt. He's up on his feet now. But let's see what the referee gives. Now, I think it's a throw into gospel with Williams. Now, Sharp's sort of 10 yards directly behind him. Now, pass to Stewart back in goal. Now, Gosport, a little bit kamikaze in and around their own 18 there. They need to be a little bit calmer there. Now, they are breaking out. This is Kavanagh over by the Harry Mizzen stand on the right. Tarbuck now in field, just twists and turns, hits the referee. The referee got in the way. <laughs> now, the referee, I think, has stopped the game because of it. But, well, uh, what do you do in those situations when it does hit the referee? Does it just go to a drop, drop kick? Ball, drop ball. And Gosport's up. Oh, so yeah. Gosport pick up. Hopefully, where they left off. Well, it's Corey Jordan who gets on the end of that drop ball. And now it's Zach Sharp in the central circle. He's got many options in front of him. And he goes for that chip ball, trying to find oh, Christian wow. Campbell. Even if he did get on the end of it, it looked as though he was in an offside position there. So I don't think it would have really done much for Gosport in the grand scheme of things. Not even Usain Bolt would have got on the end no. uh, Far too, far too over here. But uh, again, too direct for Gosport. I think the way to, to, to get a goal here for Borough <laughs> is to play around Winchester. And once you're in behind, you're going to want a Campbell or a Kavanagh delivery that's pinpoint and precise. Mm. And then you'll open the door. Well, exactly that, to be fair. And hopefully, Gosport will be looking for that goal. And there has been a number of goals in the Southern Premier League for the new listeners. Basingstoke are leading 1 0 away to Salisbury. Still, Plymouth 0, Pool Town 0. Hungerford 0, Merthyr Town 0. Hazen Yedden 0, Hendon 0. Harrowborough 1, Chesham 0. So that's going to have a big blow in the title race for Chesham if they want to win the title today. Dorchester 0, Tiverton Town 0. Didcot 0, Swindon Supermarine 0. Bracknell 0, Sholin 0. And AFC Totten 1, Walton and Hersham 0. So we're keep you updated with all those results and like us we were talking about earlier for the new listeners listening there's a lot of results going our way today and it could play dividend towards the end of the season it means nothing unless we got our house in order mm. um we had a let off on friday we lost and uh salisbury and Tottenham both slipped up that was good but it would be better if we could get a win here and then they slip up but uh, that would be the maximum outcome for us to expect from today um, I still think, you know, we've got a whole month of the season left. There's going to be a few more twists and turns. Mm, yeah. yeah. No one's going to post home nah. at all. Not I think, 
Do you not think Chesham? I think well, I'm thinking because they're 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 sort of behind the Harrow, aren't well, they? Well, yeah, that is so true. Yeah. I mean. They could turn it around potentially, but anyway. Well, it's um Lambo on the attack as he does escape Danny Hollins and both sacks sharp, but in the end he releases the ball, trying to cross, but in the end it looked as though it was more of a shot and nearly going towards the bus and smashing one of the windows. Well, there you go. It's not the first time that has been abused by straight football. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna come back to my my Cheshire comment. They need three points mm. at Harrow today. They're not getting them at the minute. So that's what I mean. This league gives you nothing. Yeah. You've got to get out there and earn it. <laughs> and that includes yeah. the champions elect. Well, I was going to say, I'm not sure if you saw Chesham's post today, but they've got quite a famous chairman, don't they? With the Taskmaster presenter. And I think they made an April Fool's comment today about him signing for the last five games. Maybe they will have to have him on full time. But it's Bradley Tarbuck coming forward menacingly, trying to thread a ball into Rafa Ramos. Once again, just too much power on the pass as it goes out for a goal kick by Kearney. Yeah, I think um, there's lots of April Fools out there. There's been some good ones that I've yeah. seen on Twitter mm. today. Um, I think the best one was Farnham of the Combined Counties League, um, who have won their division. Okay. Um, they went out this morning, club statement, we've been deducted five points by the league for an ineligible player. We're no longer champions. And their, their fans got really sucked <laughs> into it. What have you done that for? Bloody, bloody, blah. April Fool. Oh, There's goodness me. Yeah. people feeling sheepish there, Jack. Well, to be fair, I think I'd be too scared to do that with the Gosport fan base. Oh, really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Winchester currently coming forward, but it has been intercepted by Danny Hollins, playing a lovely free ball into Rafa Ramos in acres of space. Rafa Ramos against King, and he does lose it. But still, Rafa Ramos doing enough just to thread a ball back into Christine Campbell. Christine Campbell back to Danny Hollins. And Tarbuck doing well just to get on the end of that Danny Hollins pass. But it's gone all the way back to Toby Stewart in goal, thanks to an interception from Jones, just lobbing one forward and trying to get out of the danger zone. But as Barca winning the ball 20 yards out from yes. goal. Barca lining up a short. And what is it with these shorts at the moment? <laughs> they That's really... Another one. It's That's another, another one. For destined for Twick in a minute, isn't it? But uh, I've noticed we're playing a really, really high defensive Yeah, line. we are. That is risky. So, yeah, I know there's press as you're playing a pressing game, but mm, I'm not sure. Well, that. especially when we were talking about how if this away side were to get a goal, they would be looking to do it on that counter-attack. So, like you said, it's fairly risky to be playing such a high line. But if I'm being honest, it's still being Gosport mainly all in the first half an hour. But let's hope it just stays in Gosport's possession. Well, but it, half an hour now, now yeah. Off, so. Well, it was Carbon there coming oh, forward, right. but he was brought down to the floor by Lambo there. Well, I think you're, you can thank Mr Hollands for an exquisite mm. challenge on him there. If Danny had got that wrong, that would have been a free kick against us in a very dangerous position. So he had mm. to be, he had to be, definitely, it, and he was. So. Well, it probably helps with his EFL experience with the oh, likes of Pompey Campbell. and Campbell. <laughs> he must have been watching some Cristiano Ronaldo clips last night, or oh, maybe at the start of the season. Just loves to dance past some of these players. Like I remember speaking to him when he um, when he first signed. I can't remember the team he was did it for now. I think it may have been Binfield, but well, there's a lovely clip where he dances past seven players and still manages to find the back of the net after the attack. And we've seen him do it all afternoon today, but it's Winchester on the attack. As it was Danny Hollins losing the ball. It's Carbon coming forward just outside of the box. And it's another good sliding tackle from Danny Hollins there, winning the ball off of Carbon and just stopping the run of the striker. Yeah, Hollins is putting in a shift at the back, isn't he? Mm. And um, it's almost as if he's a makeshift defender, actually. Yeah. And um, he is absolutely exquisite with his challenges. Mm. He has to be. Because, again, there's another situation there. If he got that wrong, that's a free kick and a booking. And Winchester in a very dangerous position. Yeah. Well, for the fans watching at home, I suppose the best comparison to that is John Stone's involved in Man City, where he plays that CDM centre-back role. But it's a poor pass there from Danny Hollins, as we were just praising him, giving it away to Nolan. <laughs> and it's Baron the skipper, and it's going to go all the way back to Kearney in goal. It's going to still be Alex Barster chasing this down. The man who's only coming for this game after being injured for a number of weeks. But it's good to see the Czech Republican back in action. Now Winchester in Gosport's half. It's Baron on the ball, passing it into Smith. Smith. Still coming forward, but it's been hacked away by Zach Sharp as it's gone back into the Winchester half. One for King maybe to chase down, but it goes out of play and goes out for a Winchester throw. It's going to be the left-back taking the throw and passing it back to Kearney in goal. 
And yeah, like I was saying at the start of the broadcast, a lot of these players, the Winchester players, they've been there since the start of Craig Davies' reign. And a lot of them, they've had a lot of experience at this level. And could that play quite an important role towards maybe the next couple of seasons? Yes, I don't see why not. I think all it could take is uh, potentially one or two well well thought out mm. signings and they can push on. And why not? And it's uh, Because if you think what they've done against the top teams this year, why not? You know, keep a settled yeah. group and progress. Well, and I suppose they're a bit similar to Basingstoke in that aspect. Yes, because yes, Basingstoke, um, they were they got promotion in the Isthmian League and they were moved across. And Basingstoke have progressed this mm. season. And now they're giving the, the top teams a tough old time. But what you've got to think about in this division in which we're playing, there are no gifts. There's no charity. Whatever you do, whatever results you get against any team, mm. you've got to get out there and earn them. Definitely. Well, that's what makes it so hard getting out of the Southern Premier League. Gospel ourselves, we've been in here for a number of years now and we'll be looking to get that promotion this season. Fingers crossed. And a win today would have a massive part in that. But currently it's still nil-nil here at the AI Stadium. And some of the other results today... Last time we checked, Bays and Stoke were leading 1-0. And I'm pleased to say that is still the case. The only other result that has changed is Chesham. They have managed to get a goal back. So maybe the title will be theirs today. Well, they need a win, don't they? And it's all done and dusted. And they will be up in the National South next year. Uh, and they will have one or two local derbies to look forward to against Hemel, Hempstead, St Albans, uh, amongst others up in that division. So, And they you can't say they don't deserve it. They've been absolutely runaway leaders for mm, definitely. well over half the season. So, you know, congratulations to the generals because I'm sure they'll do it. Oh, and it was Dutchy Hollins there trying to thread a chip ball into Rafa Ramos, but Rafa just in an offside position there. And so Totten winning as well. We're just hearing, just throw that one in the mix. Now, Gosport, that's uh, an interesting situation that they've now presented yeah. with, James. Well, very it's a free kick inside the centre circle, isn't yes, it? but it means, tactically, very interesting situation that they're playing it short. Well, it's Rory Williams into Alex Barca, just losing it there. And I'm sure a lot of fans will remember that Welling game in particular where Alex Barca, he was coming forward, the injured man, and then just losing it and that caused the Welling goal. So a lot of bad memories involved in that sort of play. But you learn. But you exactly. Learn. He's still a young player, Barca, and uh, he's still learning. And yes, there's no doubt that that did cost us. But uh, I will, I choose to remember that FA Cup ties are just such an amazing mm, occasion it was. that it was. Yeah. Well, hopefully next season, we might have another good FA Cup run. We saw Maidstone do it this season and what a run they did. They would be the league. We would be in the same league to them if we were to get promoted. But Maidstone, let's just say they had some brilliant draws. Well, just unlucky with that semi-final. Took a championship club to stop them, didn't it? It did. Their tracks and knocked them out. And along the way... They've beaten a team that's going to be a championship club next season. Well, it's amazing, isn't it, what the FA Cup can do. You get some magical memories. Hopefully, we might have some magical memories here. It's Christian Campbell's running forward, doing multiple stepovers, escaping the run of Smith and Barron. He's still going as he passes it back now to Corey Jordan. Corey Jordan still marching forward. A wave of yellow coming forward as it's Kavanaugh whipping a ball in. But it's not a great cross as it finds the feet of Mort, who have, um, just clubs it out there. Now Winchester trying to come forward. Ball thread through, but it finds the feet of Rory Williams. Still in Gosport possession, but inside the Winchester half. And now it's Tarbuck losing the ball to Jones. And Jones lifts one forward, trying to find a Lambo. But it's a good defender from the Gosport skipper as he plays one back to Toby Stewart in goal. The problem that Winchester have, as I see it, is that um, where they're so rigid defensively, they're not going to be able to break out of defence too mm. quickly unless you give them the time to do so. So... Because as, uh, as we've correctly been showing this afternoon, when they get into their defensive uh, structure, two banks are four there, and they're not going to be able to break out very quickly. So if Gosport can catch them cold... That's the way we got to do it. Well, it's one way, one yeah. possible way. Well, hope we may do it here with Corey Jordan coming forward, passing it out wide to Harry Kavanagh, choosing to pass it back to Tarbuck. And it's just one twos between the two winger players there. Now back to Zach Sharp inside the central circle, playing it out wide into Roy Williams. Still a long way to go, 30 yards out from goal. Roy Williams coming forward, finding Rafa Ramos. Oh, Rafa Ramos now inside the oh. Winchester box. Well, that's a lovely slide and challenge from Nolan there, just to stop um, Rafa Ramos in these tracks there. And there has been a clash of legs there between Danny Hollins and Barron by the looks of it. And it looked a nasty one for the Winchester skipper there. Well, there was no intent. Hollands is apologising and um, 
yeah, there's an apology there, and he's making sure he's okay. It, Danny Hollands is not a dirty player, and he just that was mistimed. He might, he may or may not get a yellow card for it. I think the referee is contemplating a booking. Mm. Um, but yeah, going back to the Ramos incident there. I thought that was absolutely amazing defending. It was. It, it really was. was. Perfect. Because if he hadn't have done that, then Ramos, that would have been 1-0. It, well, with Ramos in that side of the position, he turned, but literally it was last man defending there from Baron. Uh, not Baron, sorry, Nolan. And it was good defending. But still, the referee talking to Danny Holland, yeah, uh, it's just a word by the looks of it. He's had a ticking off. And... Um, but I think what Danny now needs to do is be very, very careful going forward because he's now on the referee's radar. So the next time it might just be a booking. Well, I believe the referee may be having a word to one of the Winchester management assistants, but still nil-nil here at the AI Stadium. You're listening to Gosport Radio. And so far, there has been some more score changes. Still Salisbury nil, Basingstoke one, Merford Town two. So they've got two goals now against Hungerford. And Hungerford, another team chasing their playoff positions. Hayes and Yedden nil, Hendon nil, Harrow one, Chesham one. Gosport nil, Winchester nil, Dorchester one, Tiverton nil, Didcot nil, Swindon nil. But I'm going to cut off here as it was Rafa Ramos coming forward. But it's good defending from McCormick there as he just he had to turn and did well. Well, as I was saying, some of the other results. AFC Totten still leading 1 0 against Walton and Hersham and Brack nil nil, Sholin Town nil. But Gosport coming forward, winning a throw just by the Winchester dugouts. It's Christian Campbell taking it. He's got Danny Hollins behind him, just on the halfway line. Danny Hollins, and he does pass it back to Rory Williams instead by the Gosport dugout. Thomas. More to my right, where I'm watching the press box. Ooh. Zach Sharp, just outside of the Gosport zone D. Corey Jordan, back to Toby Stewart. Still Winchester applying heavy pressure with Tommy Wright. But it's good there from Toby Stewart yeah. as he passes out wide into Rory Williams. And I think what you were just saying there, we have got the lottery, well, the 50-50, and it's yeah. a lot of money just showing how good our attendance is. Yeah, no, I think that's the season's best, actually. Uh, the jackpot's going to be £167. Now, Gosport have a free kick. Well, you may have just heard the Gosport fans there, and that is because Gosport have won a free kick in a deadly area, around 25 yards out from goal, just towards the left side of the box. It's going to be, by the looks of it, Christine Campbell taking this free kick. He is now the designated corner taker. So it will be interesting to see how Campbell does with this free kick. A lot of gospel players heading towards the box. Only Williams, Kavanaugh and Tarbuck not heading towards it. Even looking at Alex Barca, he's positioning. He's just stood just outside of the edge of the D. And it's going to be Christian Campbell looping the ball in, trying to find Hollins at the back post, but it's being cleared away by Nolan there. And it's been fed through into Tommy Wright inside the middle of the park inside the central circle out wide into carbon carbon coming forward on the edge of the left hand side of the box carbon doing well to skip past Kavanaugh but he does eventually lose it and gets dispossessed by Bradley Tarbuck now Tarbuck the ball is just being played by Gosport's left corner flag before eventually being cleared and it's going to be one where McCormick has to chase it down the ball is now in Winchester's own half. Christine Campbell with a charge down and he's still sprinting the Gosport left wing before Kearney could eventually clear it. And the clearance looks as though it's going to reach Corey Jordan. But the Corey Jordan header, it's been hit backwards and it does find a Lambo. Barron passing it out wide into King. King back into the Barron, the Winchester's captain. Barron. Around 25 yards out from goal, still the left side of the box. And he is brought down to the floor there. And it was brought down by Danny Hollins. And it is going to be a free kick taken here by Winchester. Just number of minutes left to play here at the AEI Stadium. Four to be exact. Still, Gosport nil. Winchester nil. But Winchester, they do have a free kick in a deadly position round 10 yards into the Gosport half. It's going to be their skipper, Baron, taking it. It's just going to be a Gosport one-man wall. And if we're being realistic, there's not really a need for a one-man wall today, is there, with Kavanaugh in that position? It's not like he's going to go for a shot. But... Well, I'll tell you what you need to do, though, is watch all the options that are all the runners... Oh, and it's coolly collected there, there yeah. by Toby Stewart. It's very confident goalkeeping there from Toby. He, um, but you have three runners, and what you need to do is identify your threats because while he may not have gone for a shot from that angle and that distance, you can still put a really good mm. delivery in and put that pressure on. 
Well, Scottsport coming forward with the run of Alex Barca. And Barca doing well to keep it in possession as he skips past and threads the ball into Christian Campbell. Christian Campbell might have a turn to get a pass across. And it is a horizontal pass and it does find the feet of Carbon. Carbon now coming forward menacingly, coming forward into the Gosport half. It's Carbon leading the line. He's got options beside him, but he gets dispossessed by Bradley Tarbuck as it just slowly rolls out for a Winchester throw. It's going to be Smith on the far side taking the throw. Smith back to King. King, round 15 yards into the Gosport half. The left back just taking his time before eventually unleashing the cross, finding Anne Lambeau at the back post. But now Rafa wins it back thanks to the poor heavy touch. Dan Wooden just inside the central circle. Gosport coming forward. Kavanagh leading the line in this right hand channel. He's got options to the left of him and chooses to pass it. Switch it into Rafa Ramos. Rafa Ramos gets ahead on it, but literally it's good defending there from the Winchester defenders. Good sandwiching between Mott and Nolan just to make sure Rafa can unleash his shot. And then it was collected by Kearney. He releases a throw into King on the far side. Back to Mott. Mott. Winchester just starting to pass it out from the back following that Gosport attack. Still nil-nil here at the AI Stadium. Minutes left to play here. As it's Winchester coming forward. Tommy Wright inside the central circle. Alex Barca trying to chase down the forward. But Wright doing well just to pass it into McCormick. McCormick. Trying to escape past Alex Barca, and it does force him into passing it back into Mort. Mort into Baron. Baron switching it out wide into King. King, he's had a good first half, the left back. Still, Winchester coming forward. Let's just hope Bradley Tarbuck can win it back. Tarbuck trying to get on the end of the loose passes, but Winchester passing it around so cool at the back. It's a triangle by the looks of it between King, Nolan, and Lumbo, yeah. and it results with King releasing the ball which finds Rory Williams as he has to tap it back into goalkeeper Toby Stewart. Now, Toby Stewart launched one forward and it's just pinballing between the two sides at the moment. It's Danny Hollins in the centre of the park, passing it into Danny... No, not Danny Hollins. Bradley Tarbuck. Tarbuck out wide into Christine Campbell. Campbell to Barca. Barca into Tarbuck. Rory Williams just telling the gospel players just to keep it in control. We have now played the 45 minutes and we're just waiting the added time. And it looks as though we will see it now. And we can confirm it's going to be just a one minute of played. As you just heard by Jeremy there, one minute left to play. Can either team find a goal? As Danny Hollins goes sliding in and results with Rafa Ramos getting on the end of the sliding challenge, 25 yards out from goal. But he's been dispossessed by Nolan. Now Winchester coming forward down this right-hand channel. McCormick is dispossessed by Barca and it's going to be a feisty last minute. Christian Campbell now coming down this left-hand channel and it's just constant runs between the two sides. But it's Christian Campbell is managing to escape more and he has managed to work himself a gospel corner. And I would imagine this is going to be the last bit of action within the half as Christian Campbell will be the man taking the corner. Would have thought so. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good half for gospel overall. 0-0 um, going into the break, but... Uh... Winchester have defended stoutly and det mm. with determination. Fair play to them. But there's a lot to play for. Well, let's just hope Gosport can do something with this corner. It's going to be Campbell taking the corner. A lot of options moving within the box. And it oh. does find ahead of Dan Wooden, but it ricochets as it goes out. And the Kearney's really frustrated. He doesn't believe it should be a corner, but the referee does point to the corner flag and it will be another Gosport corner. I don't think it was either. I don't, honestly. know. I don't think that touched the red shirt at all. For me, it was Dan Wooden who got the last touch on that. But either way, Gosport won't be complaining. It's Christian Campbell taking it. Dan Wooden is brought down to the floor, but the referee blows up for half time as it finishes nil-nil here at the AI Stadium. The deadlock is yet to be broken as it's Gosport nil, Winchester nil. And as it's half time, I'll run you through some of the other results in the Southern Premier League. It's AFC Totten 1, Wharton and Hersham 0, Brack 0 1, Sholin 0, Didcot 0, Swindon 0, Dorchester 1, Tiverton 0. Still 0 0 here at the AI Stadium as it finishes. Harrow Borough 1, Chesham 2. So they are now leading at the break, and it does look as though the title may be in their hands now. Hazen Yedden 0, Hendon 0, Murphy Town 2, Hungerford 0. Plymouth nil, Paul Town nil, and the result we loved to see is Salisbury nil, Basingstoke Town one. Well, we'll see you in the second half, so make sure you keep on listening into the stream. But we will go mute for the time being. But let's just hope it's going to be an action-packed second half like we saw from the first half. But our finishes here: Gosport nil, Salisbury nil.
Hello everybody and welcome back to the second half commentary where Gosport take on Winchester Town here at the AEI Stadium. And looking at the sides, by the looks of it, there hasn't been any changes made for either team. So I'll run you through both sets of teams, starting with our away side. In goal, it's Luke Kearney, two, Josh McCormick, three, Daniel King, four, Daniel Jones, five, Stuart Moore, six, Patrick Nolan, seven, Max Smith, eight, Jamie Barron, nine, Thomas Wright. 10, Simba Ren Lambo, and 11, Trevor Corbin. And your Gosport lineup today sees Toby Stewart starting goal. Two, Harry Kavanagh. Three, Rory Williams. Four, Corey Jordan. 16, Zach Sharp. 15, Christian Campbell. Seven, Bradley Tarbuck. 20, Alex Barca. 19, Danny Hollins. Nine, Dan Wooden. And 18, Rafa Ramos. So it's just the one change for your Borough lineup today, which sees Alex Barca, an injured player, come in today in replace of Jake Cope. And we were just running you through um, some of the results and T speaking a bit off air there. And unfortunately, we do have some breaking news. So as we have unfortunately got that last goal. Yeah, but that's football, isn't it? You know, let's see if, uh, if we're making any changes or whether Winchester are set to make any changes. It doesn't look like it. Nah. Um, but that's football. You know, Salisbury aren't second for no reason, are they? Definitely that's, not. Uh, yeah. That's why they're there. But Basingstoke will give them a tough afternoon. Make no mistake. <laughs> Well, by the looks of it, like Jeremy said, I don't believe we should be making any changes in the second half. Just Pat and Joe having a couple of quick words with Christian Campbell there. And it will be Gosport kicking off this second half, shooting from my left to right and vice versa for Winchester. And before the second half does get underway, I will run you through some of the results in the Southern Premier League. So it's AFC Totten 1, Walton and Hersham 0, Ratnell 1, Sholin 0, Didcot 0, Swindon 0. And I'll run you through the rest of them in a minute. But we are underway in the second half with Gosport kicking off. And it's Gosport. They've already got thrown on the far side. And we're coming back to the results. Dorchester 1, Tiverton 0. 0-0 nil, nil here at the AI Stadium. Harrow 1, Chesham 2. So it does look as though the title will be theirs today. Hazen Yedden 0, nil, Hendon 0. Nil, Merford Town 2, Hungerford 0. Nil, Plymouth 0, Paul Town 0. And like we were just mentioning there, Salisbury 1, Basingstoke 1. But a Scottsport on the attack at this moment. It could be the first chance of the second half. Rafa Ramos just by the left corner flag. Doing well to get a ball across into Dan Wooden. He goes for that half volley, but hits uh, hits Mott there. And now it's Kavanaugh on the edge of the box, trying to dance his way past Mott. Unleashes the ball into Tarbuck on the overlap, and it's now being cleared by Nolan. And Tommy Wright might be able to chase this down. It's Tommy Wright against Zach Sharp. Zach Sharp doing well enough just to get goal side of their attacker there and doing well just to get a pass across to Kavanaugh. But now Kavanaugh loses it into Carbon. Carbon now dancing his way into the box, going for that pass and nearly meeting the runner of Van Lambo on the far side. And that could have been dangerous there from Winchester. Again, a little bit sloppy around the edges from Gosport there. But um, I would suggest to you that uh, Gosp uh, sorry, Winchester has started as they mean to go on in this half. That was uh, good counter-attacking football. And, yeah. Well, if you were Pat and Joe in this scenario, what would you have said to the boys at half-time? Because we did have our fair share of results. Well, not fair of results. Fair share of shots. I think the best one had to have been that Rafa Ramos shot. The overhead kick. It was a lovely shot. Nearly went in the back wouldn't of the net. The post. And, yeah, wouldn't hit in the post. But that was unlucky. I think if I in answer to your question, I'd say, look, be patient. We've got 45 minutes plus to get a goal here. Just make sure you do the right things at the back. Switch on. Concentrate. And then when you're getting upfield, pick your passes wisely. Don't go direct. Don't go route one. Think about it. Give the players options. Play around them. That would be that would be me. Well, it's Rory Williams who's just won a ball from King. On the far side, just by the Harry Mitson stand. And it's Christian Campbell lifting the ball into Rafa Ramos. Rafa coming down this left-hand channel. And it does go out on the far side as it was King who stuck out a boot there. And I believe the last touch did come off of the Portuguese as it does go out for a Winchester throw. It's going to be King taking it. And just the five minutes played here at the AI Stadium. So, Gosport nil. Winchester nil and I will keep you updated with the rest of the results in the Southern Premier League but it does look as though it's going to be a big day in the well, Southern Premier League terms so a lot of good games and it's just going to be action packed for the next 45 minutes yeah but, with the situation as it is with Tottenham winning and Salisbury drawing um, it puts the pressure on a little bit mm. more with regards to Gosport needing the three points because yeah as things stand okay 
top and just close that gap right up then whereas three points would give us a little bit of breathing space so mm. you know realistically like it's think that yeah those three teams will feature in the playoffs so it's all about the posturing and who finishes where and the impact that has on the mm. playoff competition itself well we do want that second place spot I don't we because then we get both fixtures at home. And it's Gosport currently on the attack at the moment. Christian Campbell just by the left corner flag. And he is dispossessed by Nolan there. And it was a good bit of defending there. He did stick out a good challenge in the first half. Stopping a run from Rafa Ramos. And for me, he's been one of the man of the matches for this first 45 minutes. And it looks as though he's not had a bad start to the second half either. But it's gone all the way back to Zach Sharp inside the Gosport half. Now Corey Jordan inside of the central circle. Passing it back out wide into Tarwat. Still being played in this left-hand flank. Barca into Rafa. Rafa tries to do a 1-2 back to the Czech Republican, but instead it's been intercepted by Nolan. Still, Gosport win it back thanks to Rory Williams. Williams striding down this left-hand channel, passes it into Rafa Ramos, back to Christine Campbell. Just in 10 yards inside of the Winchester half, Danny Holland is now coming forward. He's got options in front of him and instead chooses to chip a ball forward into Christian Campbell. Acres of space, Christian is. Christian now whipping in a ball. It might just find its way onto Christian Campbell, but instead finds McCormick, who has to header it out. And now Rafa is brought down, but it just looked to say one person tripped and then the other person tripped. Yeah, free kick wins to there, probably rightly so. I have to give the referee due credit. Mm. I think he's actually had a really good game. He's uh, made one mistake, but... Yeah, I think he's been pretty yeah. much he's been pretty solid today, the referee. Well, a much different display from the last home game we had. But it is a Lambert. No, not a Lambert. It's Carbon on the attack. Dancing past a number of players and doing well to get a pass back to Baron. Baron, their skipper, passing it out wide into right. Tommy Wright trying to get past his former Haven teammate. And oh, Alisa oh, in a oh, short. Oh, and it's gone in the top corner. Nine. Tommy Wright, the former Haven and Water Level man, nets for Winchester. And that's the deadlock broken here at the AI Stadium as it's Winchester 1, Gosport 0. And what a goal that was from Tommy Wright, just on the edge of the left hand side of the box, unleashing a shot, curling one into the top corner. Toby Stewart, no chance. And what a goal that is from the Winchester forward. Jeremy, you've got to give it credit there. That was a lovely finish from the former Haven't man. Great strike. And it just shows you what a moment of uh, quality from a quality player can do for a team. And uh, fair play. Uh, there's not a lot you can argue with with that goal. And uh, what it does do is it piles the pressure on Gosport now. And you will see Winchester's tails go right up. Well, in this scenario, what do we do now? Do we just constantly go attacking? Because surely we can't play the way we've been playing. No, we'll have to be. I'm going to let you tweet now. So I'm going to take over while you do that. Uh, so, yeah, Gosport have been shot six minutes into the second half. And Winchester are ahead through Tommy Wright. And uh, Gosport now need to react. Now they've kicked off. Now Jordan, in acres of space in his own half, just has a look up. Just has a look around, still in possession. In the end, it's all unhurried from, from gospel. They don't need to panic yet. But what they do need to do is they need to think about their approach going forward here. It's a throw, on, a throw on the left-hand side from Campbell here. And Williams just linking up that. So a bit of a shove in the back there on, um, I think that was on Hollands. But which to try and break out. Cable down the left-hand side has space. Jordan is scampering across to try and shut him down. But Cable runs out of road and Brad Tarbuck trying to just pressure Winchester into making the mistake but Winchester are calm they're composed it's good passing football in Gosport's final third James well it's Baron chipping a ball into Carbon there and now hopefully Gosport might be able to rework a counter-attack like Jeremy said, we've still got a multiple minutes. Well, not multiple minutes. We've still got loads of minutes left of this second half. But it's Christian Campbell coming forward, passing it into Alex Barca. Barca. Passing it out wide into Kavanaugh. And it might just meet the run of Kavanaugh, but it's good defending there from King, who just lets it run out of play. And it's gone out for a goal kick. And now there's no urgency whatsoever from the Winchester goalkeeper. He's going to take as long as he wants with this goal kick. Because let's be real, there's no need for him to take a while to take it. Winchester now are leading 1-0 here at the AI Stadium. It's not what we wanted, and especially with that Salisbury equaliser. And I will run you through some of the other results why the Winchester keepers just taking ages to take it. Salisbury 1, Basingstoke 1, Plymouth Town 0, Pooltown 0, Merford 2, Hungerford 0. 
And I may have to cut you off there as it is Winchester on the attack, but it's well intercepted by Harry Kavanagh. And I'll come back to the results in a minute. It's Gosport back on the attack. Dan Wooden trying to get on the end of a loose ball and he does latch onto it, passing it into Bradley Tarbuck. Tarbuck coming down this right-hand channel, trying to get past King. And it looks as though he's going to do that, but King getting the goal side and in frustration Tarbuck brings King to the floor just shoves him to the floor and in the day in the, no, at the end of the day it's a clear free kick Gosport can't allow frustration to take hold they have time um, and you just you just have to Diaz is warming up yet just looking at that but yeah you've got to think that was a moment of individual yeah. brilliance and you can't legislate for that kind of you thing. can't you really yeah, can't but yeah okay but the end result is the same Gosport are a goal down and they're just going to have to approach this now. They still have to be patient, but what they can't be is mm. wasteful. Well, like many players in this league, Tommy Wright is just one of those players with bags of experience, particularly with that having a more to season, helping them get promoted. And unfortunately, it's come to bite Gosport. Even though we've got a number of players who have had that similar level of experience, we are the team losing currently 1-0 here at the AI Stadium. And Rafa Ramos currently just by the left corner flag, whips in the ball, trying to find Dan Wooden. But it's well intercepted by Moore. And Winchester, once again, are going to go forward. It's Carbon. Leading the line as he passes it into goal scorer right. Right back into Carbon. Carbon now coming forward menacingly. Carbon, he's going to unleash a shot. Just sends one wide of the left post and nearly smacks one of the Gosport fans from where it's just bent too wide. And in the end, it's not a great shot from the number 11. But still, once again, it's causing Gosport trouble. Yeah, and it's the wayside looking like the better team in the opening yeah, 10 they, minutes. They, what they've done is they've allowed him far too much room there. And again, it's good counter-attacking play from Winchester. Broke out of defence quickly. That kind of rubbishes what I said early, earlier on, where I mm. thought they were a little bit too slow to break out their defensive lines. But look at them now. Well, Carbon coming forward again. Can he get past Corey Jordan? He does do that, but he can't get past Tarbuck, who leaves a trailing leg. And as a result, he manages to get away from the danger zone. Now, Alex Barster on the far side of the box, near the left corner flag. Gosport trying to just get out of this danger zone, having an awful opening 10 minutes of the second half. And now it's Williams who gets rid of the ball. Now Dan Wooden inside of the centre circle. It's Danny Hollins now whips the ball out wide into Harry Kavanagh. Kavanagh's in acres of space, so let's see what the right back can do. Kavanagh coming forward, trying to dance his way past King. Can he get past King? That's the question. King's been sensational in the first half and he's had a good start to the second half. But Kavanagh just doing well to pass it back to his fellow defender in Corey Jordan. Now Bradley Tarbuck on the edge of the box, 25 yards out from goal. Kavanaugh with the overlap, tries to whip in a ball, nearly finding Rafa Ramos, but an outswinging leg from Mott just makes sure it can't be fed to the Portuguese. Now Danny Holland is going to keep coming back. It's, it's Campbell, yes, yeah, Campbell in the left-hand channel, whipping a ball. It does find the head of Alex Barca, but just too much power on the cross. Rafa trying to get under control. He flicks it back, but now it's been headed out wide by Mott and it's gone all the way out. Now Tommy Wright trying to chase it down. And now Smith on the ball. Smith just getting past the halfway line. Unleashes the ball, which might just find the run of Carbon. Can Carbon's pace keep it in play? No, you just can't. The ball just fizzles its way past. And Antonio Diaz just comes to help it out, speed up the play as he passes it to his fellow goalkeeper. And... It's a quick goal kick taken, this goal kick this time taken by Zach Sharp. And there's a bit more urgency within this Gosport side now. There has to be. There has to be. They can't afford to sort of play the way they were playing in the first half now, where they were patient and just trying to pick the right ball. A little bit more urgency required now. Um, possibly Joe and Pat are going to be thinking of a possible change. Well, we've seen Diaz run, but yes, maybe yes. is he the right way or do we bring on a Stanley, Stanley or a Harvey Rue even? No, I think you need a bit of pace, and Stanley provides that. Now, Diaz, is, it brings on the guile and the mm. experience. So, yeah. Well, it's Danny Hollins inside the Winchester box, dipping a ball in, trying to find Dan Wooden. But there was no Dan Wooden in sight. And maybe Winchester can once again recounter as it's Sharp who headers back in from the halfway line. And it does go all the way to the Winchester box. And it's a quick goal kick taken by Kearney. And it does nearly find Tommy Wright, but either way, the offside flag, it was miles offside in the end. And in the end, of course, Toby Stewart, no problem. But unfortunately, inside Winchester half, Carbon is down. He's had a good opening heart. Well, he's had a good start to the second half. And if he's down, it will be a bit of a blow for Winchester. Or even if he is down, if you were Davies right now, what would you be saying? Like, would you maybe bring on... 
bring off the striker if he is injured. Maybe go a bit more defensively. Well, we're getting. It looks like we're going to. They're getting a sub. Well, either way, the breaking with thanks to the injury, it just gives both sets of sides this time just to talk with their players. And as it is currently injured, I will run you through some of the other results in the Southern Premier League. It's been 16 minutes played at the second half here. Still, Gosport nil, Winchester one. And AFC Totten, they lead against Walton and Hersham. Bracknell Town 2, Sholin 0, Didcot 0, Swindon Supermarine 0, Dorchester 1, Tiverton Town 0. Harrow Borough, they, they're, no, they're losing now 2-1 to Chesham United. Hazen Yedden 0, Hendon 0, Murphy Town 2, Hungerford 0, Plymouth 0, Paul Town 0, and Salisbury 1, Basingstoke 1. So there are all the other results in the Southern Premier League. And... Maybe Gosport, they might be about to make a change. Like it's going to be yeah, Diaz yeah. getting undressed as he untakes the vest. Yeah, they're, they're, they're and it's also going to be Winchester making a sub. Yeah, so it's going to be, cable, yeah, right? Cable. And he's had a great game. So it's sad to see him go for Winchester POV. So, and even Kearney, the yeah, goalkeeper, yeah, having to help him out. But we can now confirm it's Kerborn off and it's Oli Barmer on. Ladies and gentlemen, Winchester City substitution coming on number 14, Oli Barmer, replacing number 11, Trevor Cable. So oh, it's... Got a goal up. Oh, I know, saw it, saw it. Uh, it's been better than the Oli Barmer. Well, we have just had word, Oli Barmer, he is a bit of a sensation when it comes to the likes of free kicks. He knows where to find the goal, so maybe it's not what we thought. It is that attacking change coming on, so maybe it Winchester might... want to keep the same tempo. I think we're making a double change, actually. Is getting ready. I think it's going to be Diaz and Rue coming on, so we'll have to see what happens mm. there. Well, Gosport, they're on the attack. It was Dan Wooden. His shirt was tugged, but there was no appeals from the veteran. And Gosport is still coming forward. It's Alex Barson with a lovely volley in the air, but can he keep it in play? Yeah, he does. The pace of the winger does do well enough to keep it in play. He does go down, and the ball does go out for a Winchester throw on the far side, around 10, no, probably 20 yards away from the Winchester goalkeeper. But it's going to be Nolan taking this, taking this throw in. I'm um, just, yeah, like you said, it is going to be Antonio Diaz and I think Harvey Roo. I think it's a double yeah. change. I think I'll be surprised if it's not, but let's find out. Well, we will have confirmation, I would imagine now, if the referee can spot it. Joe Lee just not happy they didn't make that Won't substitution. Be because the, the, with the ball's still live. So um, we'll have to wait and see the next time there's a stoppage. Gosport have certainly alerted the assistant referee on this side to the fact that they want to make a change. Mm. Right, now we might see And it. there has been a stop in play thanks to a tug of shirt on Alex Barca. And the person tugging the shirt there was more, and the free kick is going to be taken. So we are still going to have to wait until the substitutes occur. It's Corey Jordan coming forward, passing it into the centre of the park into Dutchie Hollands. Hollands with a cross, oh, oh. nearly finding the run of Dan Wooden, but Rafa, he's going to get on the end of it. Rafa Ramos passes it back Jeez. into Corey Jordan. Jordan going for a shot, oh. and it whips just wide at the left post. How close was that? That was close. If Wooden had got a foot on that, that would have been one all. Comes out, John. Good thing for Spain. Wow, wow, wow. That was very close from the Gosport defender there. Oh. Right, hang on, we're making a second one. And also Stanley. So 18. 18. Okay, that's a two. Yeah. 18. Ladies and gentlemen, Gospel Bar, a double substitution. Coming on, number 10, Antonio Diaz. Number 11, Alfie Stanley. And they're replacing number 15, Christian Campbell. And number 18, Rafa Rux. Just change. Right, so uh, James is tweeting, so I'm just going to carry you through. It's a double change for Gosport then. They have to do something. You could just feel the game starting to shift away from them. Um, so let's see what happens. Campbell's had to come off on the far side of the field. He's running around by the clubhouse end. Just <laughs> getting a lot of high fives. Yeah, getting a few high fives on the way. But, uh, but is that a shock for you seeing Campbell come off? Yes. Like for me, that's the wrong decision. Bring Well, considering he's been one of our star men. Well, I can only say that's a tactical reshuffle. Well, I would imagine it's going to be Antonio Diaz coming and playing this, well, left wing position. Or maybe it's going to be Stanley playing it. 
because it looks as though Diaz, he's just drifting towards the right-hand side. And Alfie Stanley nearly getting on the ball for his first touch, but he loses it out into Nolan. Now Winchester coming forward. It's Tommy Wright, the goal scorer, playing through number 14, Barmer. Barmer plays it out wide into um, Lambo, And Lambo. He's just on the edge of the box. Has to pass it back to Balmer. Balmer going for a shot. It might just find Tommy Wright at a bad post. And that's a brilliant save from Toby Stewart. It was just dipping down towards that far, no, near post. And nearly catches Toby Stewart off guard there. Had to be alert, didn't he, Toby? But it just shows you there's that man again and uh, causing gospel problems every time. So uh, James is tweeting again because obviously we all multitask here at Gosport <laughs> Borough. Nothing's ever... No, one man, no. one job. It's not uh, you have one job. Actually, we have about three. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so the, the ball is back with Luke Kearney, the uh, Winchester keeper, recently arrived from Paul Town and uh, just starting a move out on the right-hand side. The ball played up towards the number seven, that's Smith. But it's intercepted. Oh, this is, I think, this is oh, is it? Yeah, it now this is standing in towards Wooden. It's cut out by Winchester. You've got uh, right back there doing his defensive duty, I think. And uh, Gosport, all of a sudden, they from attacking, they're having to defend. Corey Jordan on the right-hand side switches it infield. Hollands in the centre circle has a look, goes wide out to the left-hand side. They're trying to stretch Winchester from right to left, just trying to stretch this uh, Winchester defensive line. There's, uh, and Winchester retreat into their two banks of four, as they have done all of this afternoon with some success. Now, here's Jordan, the ball cut out, but... Uh, very nearly intercepted back by Diaz. Now, over to you. Well, the ball has now gone out of play and it will be a Gosport throw-in just by the Gosport dugout. It's going to be Harry Kavanagh taking this throw-in. Uh, he hasn't got too many options around him. The only man I can see in space is currently Antonio Diaz and that's behind the throw-in taker. Instead, Kavanagh, he finds a run-in Alex Barca as the ball fizzles its way back into Rory Williams. Now, just stood on the halfway line. Gosport, they're going to have to come forward and we really do need that equaliser now if we want the three points. And it's Stanley with oh. a shot and he sends one just wide of the right post. 20 yards out, the former Pompey man goes for goal, dragging an effort just wide, but the power was definitely there. Kearney was beaten, but unfortunately it just wasn't on target. Look at the post there for any friction burns. I'll tell you what, that was pretty close. And that, but Gosport have got to be adventurous like that. They've got to shoot on sight because... That's what uh, that's what Wright did at the other end. Mm, yeah. So, well, what a goal that was. Yeah, absolutely. Don't be too clever now. Just you've got to be a little bit more urgent as the clock ticks down and not do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> bit defensively kamikaze there. Um, now, Kavanagh starts another move down this right-hand side. Goes long, looking for Wooden. And Stanley makes a run. I thought he was clicked there. Referee oh, decides that it is a good the City free kick. I don't really understand that. Stuart Mott goes to the floor like he's been shot. And there was contact. I'm not sure it was that dramatic. But he has won the free kick. But uh, Winchester lead here. Goal to nil. We've had 21 minutes of the second half. And uh, Gosport must turn this around. And there's another... Side. Well, they're Winchester. They will be making a change. And as the change is occurring, I will run you through some of the results in the Southern Premier League. Uh, we can now confirm it's going to be goal scorer Tommy Wright coming off. And in his replacement, it's going to be number 17. So it's going to be Sam Ashton coming on. So Sam Ashton, the man coming on. And another player who I believe has quite a bit of experience at this level. And, well, I would imagine it's going to be a tactical change. 23 minutes, like um, one of the people in the press box said here, Literally, is it enough time, Jeremy? Yeah, it is, but they need to get a move on. Um, yeah, Ashton's a bit of an experienced campaigner. He's been at Salisbury. Uh, we had him here a few years ago. But yes, he's got good experience and uh, and he's from the Ashton footballing dynasty as well. He has two or three brothers and all of them all of them play at a good standard in non-league. So, well, I was uh, going to say, it's one of them Harvey Ashton. Oh, Ashton, I might have to cut you off. It's a stand word coming forward. Looping one over the Gos no not Gosport, um, the Winchester defender in Nolan. But in the end, the skill comes back to bite him as Nolan comes back, intercepts it, and it's gone out for a throw and on the far side, just near the Harry Mitson stand. And I believe it could be on the halfway line. Good defensive work there from Stuart Mott, the Winchester number five, just holding Wooden off. 
um, and Gosport just starting to look a little more desperate now. But they need, you know, mm. you're only halfway through the second half. There's time. Well, Winchester, they do have a free kick in a deadly... Well, not deadly. It's not too deadly. But still, they do have a free kick around five yards away from the halfway line. Still in Winchester's half. It's going to be King taking it. Can the new boys, Barmer and Ashton, the new attacking force, have anything in this involved in this free kick? It's headed away by Corey Jordan just outside the Gosport box, but it still stays in Winchester possession. It's Ashton coming forward, but it's been smacked away by Alex Barca. And the clearance, it finds Dan Wooden coming down this right half flank. He is nudged to the floor. A free kick is taken quickly, and it is passed to Harry Cavanaugh coming down this right-hand channel. We're seeing a ball, and it's taking the nick off of Mott, and it does go out for a Gosport corner. It's going to be Cavanaugh taking the corner. Let's just hope Gosport can do something with this corner. If they score now, surely they might be able to find another and surely find that winner. Hopefully, if the floodlights go, we could see start to see the goals coming. Well, Gosport need to use this to their advantage. I don't think they should go short. I think it needs to be long and into the danger zone. Diaz with the corner. Sit towards that back post. Finding the head of Corey Jordan. And it just goes over. And yeah. There, Baron, Winchester's captain, he has gone down. At this point, I'm not sure whether they're just trying to time waste or whether the captain is actually injured. There's been another number of players who've gone down. And it does look as though Pat and Joe, they may be making another substitution. They did just signal something towards the sideline, ref. I don't, it can only be Harvey Roof. It can mm. only be because I can't see them. Well, Joe Cope's a possibility, but. Um, well, um, Cope might, might be that best. player to give the urgency. And it's the goal kick launched. It's fizzling all the way back to Balmer. Balmer just by the left corner flag. And he lets it run out of play as it does go out for a Winchester corner just to the left corner flag. And we will be confirming the attendance in a minute. But we're going to let this corner be yes, taken first. Yeah. It's going to be Baron taking it, the captain. The man who was just injured just moments ago. So that's going to be Baron with the corner. Can Winchester find their second of the day? It's hit towards the back post as it's punched away by Toby Stewart. But either way, the referee blows up for a Gosport free kick. Right, now would be a good time to get the attendance out. Yep. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the official attendance at the AEI Stadium this afternoon is a season's best. 1,137. 1137. Outstanding support. Thank you. Well, as so you just heard from Jeremy there, it's the season's best attendance, and it's a lovely summer's day, and maybe what you could expect from a game like this. But uh, yeah, it's a lovely spring day for sure, but uh, and it's a bank holiday, so you always like to think you're gonna get a good gate on a bank holiday. Um, but yes, yeah, Scott Sport now chasing this game, I'm afraid. And uh, you finished? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's Gosport coming forward again. It's Alex Barca just outside of the box. I think a lot of the Gosport fans were unhappy with that. Right, Gosport change coming. And we can confirm there will be another Gosport change within the next couple of moments. And 26 minutes have been played of the second half. It's still Winchester 1, Gosport 0. We are still looking for that equalising goal. It's Harry Cavanaugh coming down this right-hand channel, whipping the ball in, trying to find Dan Wooden, but it's going to go all the way back out to Antonio Diaz, 30 yards out from goal. Alex Barca chipping the ball forward into Harry Cavanaugh, coming down this right-hand channel once again. He's in pockets of space, but he's got Barmer chasing him down. Cavanaugh unleashes a cross, but it finds the legs of Mo Nolan, who heads, heads it out. And we can confirm there will be a third change. It will be Gosport's final change as it will be Harvey Rue coming on. But that substitution, it will come on in a minute as it's Bradley Tarbuck looping in a ball, nearly finding down Wooden. And it's falling all the way back to Tarbuck once again. Tries to get a shot across, but nowhere near enough power as it hits the Winchester defender just in the leg and causes no damage before eventually McCorrick can clear it. It's going to be one Toby Stewart. He's coming out of his box as he hopes to maybe get back into the danger zone for Gosport. Toby Stewart clears it forward. But it's been headed away by King. Now, and now and Lambo. 
And it will be Barca coming off. So it will be Harvey Roo coming on for Barca. And let's just hope Harvey Roo might be able to come on with an equal standing game. Tarbuck on the edge of the box, finding Danny Hollins. Hollins whipping the ball back to Tarbuck. Tarbuck going to put a ball into the middle, but it finds Kearney who collects it well. And he's just going to take as much time as possible with this. Still, Gosport not lo well, Gosport losing 1 0 thanks to Winchester. And I will run you through some of the results while Kearney is currently holding the ball. So, still, Salisbury 1, Basingstoke 1, Pool Town 0, Parkway 0. Murphy 2, Hungerford 0, Hazen Yedden 0, Hendon 0, Harrow 1, Chesham 2, Winchester leading, Dorchester 1, Tiverton 0, Swindon 0, Didcot 0, Bracknell 5, Sholin 0, and AFC Totten 0, Walton and Hersham 0. So some big results there in the Southern Premier League. And it's a missed opportunity for me if we don't collect some sort of points today. And annoyingly, if Salisbury do stay, keep hold of that 1-1 draw, they will leapfrog Gosport and they will jump up to second place. And not just that, the top will be closing the gap right up. So I think it just shows you how important it is that mm. we turn this game around. Um, you know, we had all the luck. Here's the change. And we can now confirm it's Alex Barca who's going to be the man making way. And it's Harvey Roo coming off. Winchester also making a change. It's going to be 50, 15 Oliver Griggs coming on. And it's going to be eight coming off. So there's Skipper Barron coming off. Ladies and gentlemen, both teams making changes. Gospel Borough first, coming on the eight Harvey Roo, replacing number 20 Alex Barter. For Winchester, coming on number 15 Ollie Griggs, replacing number eight Jamie Barron. Well, not too long left to play here at the AEI Stadium, just the 15 left plus additional time. And Jeremy, this is really coming down to the last couple of wires now. Got to do something. Got to get. Got to get something from this game now. Um, as I just said before, the changes happened. That uh, I think Gosport used up all their luck on Friday mm. because they lost, and then the other team slipped up. Not happening today with Totten leading, Salisbury on a point, ch potentially chasing a win. And we have got to turn this around. Well, Gosport, they've got 10 points from the last 21. And they will be looking to collect some points today. As Harry Kavanagh, he was coming forward. As he did try and attempt to cross, he did put a cross in. Finding the legs of Nolan, who does go out for a Gosport corner. It's going to be Antonio Diaz taking the corner. Let's just hope we can find something. Well, we did find a goal in the 92nd minute last time we played Winchester. So there is hope for Gosport. And it's going to be Diaz taking this corner. Can we find a goal here? That is the question. Diaz with a Jordan, corner Leather finds alive. Jordan and it's being cleared off the line. I think it was Alfie Stanley there with a the last chance, just guiding a header and it was cleared off the line. Not sure from what Winchester defender there, but either way, that was pretty close for Gosport. Yeah, and uh, they're knocking on the door, but they need to get a move on now with uh, 15 minutes left, 1-0 down and uh, other results going against us now. And... Uh, but you have to hand it to Winchester. Defensively outstanding mm. today. One bit of brilliant individual individualism for the goal. And uh, yes, at the moment, they're looking likely to take it. But Gosport will know the importance. Now, I think I don't know whether Joe and Pat will need to tell these players what's going on in the other games, that they need to turn this around. They have to. Mm. Otherwise, it's, well, it's a very poor Easter weekend if they don't. Well, it's Gosport coming forward now. Tarbuck in the left-hand flank coming forward. He's got Am Lambo next to him. And it looks as though he's done well to get past him, thanks to a good bit of trickery, before Am Lambo eventually gets goal side and clears it. But the clearance is falling to Zach Sharp inside the centre circle. Sharp passing it back out wide into Rory Williams. Williams, there's a short pass into Hollins. Back to Williams in the left-hand flank. Williams coming forward. Trying to play through Tarbuck, but he can't do it as it goes out for a Gosport throw-in on the far side, just by the left corner flag. It's going to be Williams taking the throw-in. Williams to Danny Hollins, 25 yards away from the Winchester goal. Tarbuck hoping to get goal side. And he does do well just to get a cross, -ish, cross there, but I think it was a cross at least. And now Jordan trying to whip in a ball, but it finds the head of Nolan. Now Harvey Roo heading back into the danger zone. 
Antonio Diaz does well to get on the end of it and unleashes the short heading towards the bottom left corner and Kenny gets down low and to make a good save there. Yeah, it was on target. Diaz showing in all of his experience there, kept it calm, picked his spot, keeper made a good save, but that was Gosport's mm. best chance the second half. Well, I think that just says it all, really, if that's our best chance. Because well, even at the end of the day, that still wasn't particularly that amazing of a chance. Well, it's Kavanaugh. He's trying to escape danger there, thanks to the two substitutes, Barmer and Ashton, putting heavy pressure on the fullback. 12 minutes left to play here. Still, Gosport losing 1-0 to Winchester. Can we find that goal? Can we find the points we need desperately in order to secure that second place spot? But it does well, it heavily looks as though we're not going to keep second place spot today. Well, as things stand, no, we're going to lose it, and it's going to change the dynamic considerably with the playoff situation. Mm. Tottenham will be right up Gosport's backsides now, and with their tails up, and it's not it's not what you want, really. Um, because yes, Gosport will still require those seven points to get into the playoffs. Well, Tarbuck coming down this left hand channel, he's got options in front of him, but chooses to pass it back to Danny Hollins just outside of the centre circle. To Corey Jordan, the fullback. Corey coming forward. He's got Kavanaugh in front of him, but Jordan's going to go alone, skipping past multiple defenders before eventually running it out of play. And that's mm -hmm. poor play from the defender there. Should have released the pass miles beforehand. Yeah, he had a lot more time to, to work with there and he just carried on, carried on up a blind alley and then eventually lost the ball and it was thrown to Winchester. Now, we've got 10 minutes left. Now, Gosport have got to find something. If they don't, then I'm not going to be, I don't think I'm being over dramatic. I would say it's a disastrous mm. Easter weekend. You know, two defeats, six points dropped and not a goal scored as it stands. Well, it's not promotion looking form. And now Winchester coming forward again with Griggs. Griggs trying to get past Harvey Roo and he does do that. Griggs still coming forward before eventually Harvey Roo sticks in a leg and does well to keep it in play just by the far side near the Harry Mitson stand. Now Gosport coming forward, Rory Williams skipping past a number of players. To Tarbuck. Tarbuck. The ball is just being played around this halfway line. Gosport coming forward. Dutchie Hollands into Williams. Williams plays the ball into Alfie Stanley. Stanley back to Hollands. Hollands. Looks as though he's going to go alone. Passing the free ball into Antonio Diaz. Diaz doing well to keep it in play. Yeah. Diaz playing it out wide to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh oh. loops in a ball. Instead of finding Dan Wood in it, instead finds the feet of Nolan. Nolan still having an exceptional game, the defender. And Gosport, they've got a corner and it has been taken short from Antonio Diaz. Kavanaugh with the corner. It's been, a, it's a hard hit cross. And it's Harvey Rue on the, oh, well, it's Harvey Rue. He had a shot there and it looked as though the shot kind of acted as a pass. Danny Hollins nearly getting on the end of that pass. But it was a good bit of goalkeeping from Kearney there just to make sure it couldn't get past him. But as a result, thanks to that bit of play, Gosport do have another corner. It's going to be Diaz taking the corner. And we'll be hoping for a similar style corner to the last one. Diaz hit towards the far post, finding Corey Jordan as he heads it down. And it's gone yeah! in the back of the net. Yeah! Alfie Stanley with a goal. He taps it in. Alfie, Alfie Stanley with a goal. He hasn't got too many goals in yellow. But how big could that goal be? On the 73rd minute, Alfie Stanley taps it in. It was Antonio Diaz with the corner, finding Corey Jordan at the back post with the defender heading it down to the short striker. Um, but despite his height, the striker still manages to find the back of the net, placing the shot past Kearney, and it's back on equal terms as it's Gosport 1, Winchester 1. And wow, immediately from the... Wow. Alfie Stanley! And just like that, the click of the fingers, Gosport are back in this race. And maybe we are looking for the three points once again. And Alfie Stanley, like I was saying to the viewers, Jeremy, he doesn't get many goals. But when he does, he pops up in important situations like this. Phew. <laughs> well, OK. Oh, on. Play does go on, despite Alfie Stanley being brought to the floor. And now he does pull it back, down with him being fouled on the edge of the box. Around 20 yards out from goal. It's a great opportunity for Gosport here to have a shot at goal. It's been breathless, hasn't it? It has. The last yeah. five minutes now. It's been breathless, hasn't it? And uh, you're tweeting, so I'll, I'll keep you going through this. Um, Gosport, the pressure they were putting on, piling on, has brought dividends. But this could be interesting. They've got a free kick 23, 24 yards out to the right of the D. 
Uh, Winchester putting five in the wall, so we're uh, clearly seeing the danger. This is one for Rory Williams, left foot. He needs to get the ball up and down. The keeper's sort of at his far post, inviting Williams to come to the near with the free kick. But uh, Kavanagh's there as well. So here we go. What's going to happen? Williams or Kavanagh? Williams strikes over the wall, into the wall, sorry. And where's it? Comes, comes back down again. There's another shot. Tarpa! Oh. Wide! Oh. Wow, that was close. But uh, and the pressure that Gosport are piling on now and... Yeah, they, they've got to keep this up. We've got seven minutes left. Now, can they? Can they win this? And, and at the same time, nothing stupid at the other end. Well, it's Gosport 1, Winchester 1. You're listening to Gosport Radio. And boy, how the five minutes have really changed. The pendulum's totally adjusted as it is Gosport 1, Winchester 1. And it all came thanks to a goal from Alfie Stanley. Corey Jordan heading it down to the striker as the striker buried it past Kearney. And we're back on equal terms now, looking for the ever-growing three points. Ultimately, these could be the point that keeps us in second place with Basingstoke still drawing to Salisbury 1-1. Let's just hope Gosport don't fluff their lines here. As the ball is going back to Toby Stewart, just on the edge of the box, but the keeper does well to collect it. And it looks as though Gosport, they're starting to take their time now. Williams playing the ball forward into Tarbark. Tarbark, he's got options in front of him, but opts to pass it back into Williams. Williams now coming forward, taking his time as he switches it out wide into Harry Cavanaugh. Just not too much power on the cross as it sees it. McCorrick get on the end of the ball. Jordan now coming forward, passes it into Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, back to Jordan. Jordan, the man who got the assist for Gosport's goal, passing it wide into Diaz. Diaz into Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, just on the edge of the Winchester box. Playing a pass into Tarbuck. Tarbuck going for goal. And he finds it back in there. On the 84th minute, Gosport find a goal. Just like that. The last five minutes, I've seen two goals. And the last one from Badley Tarba as he loops the ball into the back of the net. Kearney has no chance. And just like that, Gosport have found it. Surely they might have just found the victory. And how big those three points could be. What a goal for Gosport. Ladies and gentlemen, goal for Gosport in the 85th minute. The scorer, number seven, Brad Tarbuck. Well, how things can change, Jeremy. What a goal that was from that man, Bradley Tarbuck. Well, 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 well. And wow, that was some goal, wasn't it? He struck with venom. And that chucked inside that far post into the top left-hand corner. And Gosport somehow have turned this around. Somehow. Well, there was a lot of frustration shown from the Winchester defence in that goal. And there has been a yellow card plucked, which I believe was shown to Nolan. But boy, what a change this game has. Yeah. Let's just hope Gosport can keep hold of the 2-1 yeah, lead. They need to, right, we've got four minutes now, nothing stupid. And really just be aware of the threat, the threat that Winchester still pose. Because this game's not over. <laughs> not at all. Over. But the confidence boost that will give Gospel, and also it will also think that all the rivals that will see this score will think, uh oh. Come on. And Stanley doing well to dance his way oh. past. But the shot, it just it finds a dive in McCormick there. He gets down low, and Winchester back on the attack, Jeremy. Yes, they are. But uh, the crowd, listen to the crowd. Suddenly the crowd have come alive. and. You've got over a thousand in here this afternoon. You've probably got a couple of hundred Winchester fans, but I'll tell you what, the atmosphere's just ramped up a level or two since the Gosport's second goal. 2 1 they lead, four to play. Well, it would be good if we could get that third goal and just cushion a lead. Just make sure we get that victory. They, well, need, to, they need to hang on now. They've, they've done the hard work, they've turned it around. It was looking quite worrying at one point, but now 2 1, nothing stupid. Be sensible and try and use your game management to see this out. But Winchester, they've grafted, they've worked their black sides off and you've got part of you has to feel for them. Yeah, oh, you really have to feel for Winchester. They've been excellent in the second half. But it's just been the last 10 minutes in particular from Gosport that have got us the two goals. And it is Gosport 2, Winchester 1. You're listening to Gosport Radio. And Gosport, they do have a free kick 20 yards out from goal in this right-hand side, around five yards away from the touchline. It's going to be a one-man wall with McCormick standing in the wall. But it's going to be Antonio Diaz taking it. I wonder if he's going to go for the short option again. Looks as though he's lining up 
a long option. Let's see what the cam does here. Diaz with a ball in. It's hit towards the near post and finds McCormick. It's not a great free kick, was it, there no, from it Winchester? Poor. It was poor. He'll be disappointed with that. Um, but now Gosport need to think about their game management. We've got 90 seconds of normal time left plus whatever the referee sees fit to Well, have. Stanley winning the ball, and he's coming forward. Passes out wide into Harvey Roo, and Harvey Roo teased up a short place and one just wide at the left post. And it looked as though it was heading towards that bottom left corner, but in the end, just going wide, Jeremy. Yeah, wasteful a little bit from Harvey. He had better options, I think, but it doesn't matter. All the time, Gosport are attacking. Winchester can't, and, uh, and the clock is ticking now, and... Uh, Winchester have come here with a very, very clear predetermined game plan. Mm. They're going to have to change it now because they've gone from trying to control the game to chasing it. Well, but Phil, Pat and Joe, what are you going to do now then? Do we defend it? Game management. Mm. What I'm saying is that Winchester are going to have to change the game plan. Gosport now, game management. But at this point in time, with literally a minute of normal time to go plus whatever the referee adds on, you've got to you've got to be possess you've got to keep possession, you've got to be sensible. Smith do that. ramp him forward. And it is a good challenge from Sharp. He wins back the ball and he also brings oh, number four wow. to the floor. And there will be a yellow card produced to Zach Sharp as he's protest he's protesting his innocence to the referee. Well, I'll tell you what, the threat that opens up now is Ollie Barmer of Winchester City, who is a set set piece specialist, and he scored against Dorchester with one on Saturday. So Gosport now have got to be alive to the threat that he's going to surely present them. Well, this is why I hate being a Gosport commentator. You just want to like put your hands in front of your eyes. You do not want to see this whatsoever. Exactly. I'm not looking forward to watching. Well, let's just hope it's more like the Gosport free kick, where it's going to be Oli Barmer taking it, as Jeremy just alluded well, to. You've got McCormick there, but is Barmer the other player? Well, surely Barmer's got to be the you option. Really think so, because it's... After last Saturday, particularly, and it will be Barmer taking it as he whips one oh. just wide. It looked as though it brushed against the side netting. And how close was that from Winchester to getting back on equal terms? Yeah, no, it just brushed the side netting on its way wide, but it just shows you you cannot concede free kicks around that area because the next one might just go in. So, Gosport, a bit careless. Six minutes added there. They really yeah, that's really not what you wanted to see, was it? Minutes. Six sure minutes left to play here at the AI Stadium, and we will have a confirmation seven. here. And it's not what you want to see here at the AI Stadium. There's seven minutes added on. Can Gosport hold on to this 2-1 lead? We'll wait and see. But it's Winchester coming forward once again. It's Jones playing it out wide into McCorick. McCorick looping a ball in, but it evades Embarma and instead finds the skipper Rory Williams as he heads over the Harry Mitson stand. Winchester, there's bound to be some more opportunities, and I wouldn't be surprised if that free kick was the last we see of Winchester. Well, Gosport now needs just to be calm. They need to be composed, and uh, we've already, you know, we've already played one. Mm, That's yeah. one minute down already of the seven added. So, score again. Well, Diaz smashes one out, but has found Griggs. But Griggs poorly gives it away to Kavanaugh just by the Winchester dugout as Kavanaugh loops one away. A lot of Gosport fans tell on the. Um, Gosport striker Dan Wooden to chase it down it's Winchester boot one forward once again trying to find a Lambo but it's been headed away by Rory Williams and now Tarbuck hoping to get on the end of it as he passes one forward can it find Alfie Stanley the goal scorer nearly but instead finds McCormick McCormick now in reverse coming down McCormick coming forward finds a Lambo but it's a good challenge from Rory Williams now Griggs coming forward McCormick he is he goes to the floor but it looked to say the defender just slipped there I think it just shows you that Winchester are going to pose a threat to the very, very, very end. And uh, Dan Wooden's up there on his own. Now, what he lacks is pace, bless mm. him. Uh, <laughs> but what he doesn't lack in any short, short form is uh, determination. But Gosport now have got to do their defensive duties because Winchester, seeing that seven-minute ball go up, will have their tails up. Definitely. And I believe there has been a hand... Oh, well, it was Barmer there who just whipped the ball wide, but it looked to say the referee, he was initially blowing up for a foul, for a handball. I think it was a foul from Rory Williams, but the referee just let it go. Played the advantage, and as a result, Barmer whipped the ball wide of Toby Stewart's right post. And as a result, Gosport, they will be... Get oh, no, he's coming back to the free kick. Well, we've had two and a half minutes of these seven added on. So, Gosport, they've had their warning. They've been issued a warning there. 
don't be clammy cardi, don't be sloppy in your own final third because you're going to get punished. They've done the hard work. They turned it around when they weren't looking likely to do it. Don't throw it away now. No. Well, Selfie Stanley is 20 yards out from goal, just near the right corner flag. He's trying to escape McCormick. McCormick's been a thorn in the Gosports attack, but Alfie Stanley doing well just to get, well, dance his way past a lot of the defenders there. But Gosport, they're just going to start playing it out from the back. It's Corey Jordan, the man who got the assist for the first goal, whips the ball in, finding Dan Wooden, but Dan Wooden in an offside position as the referee blows up. And as a result, Winchester, they will be given a free kick, quickly taken, finding M. Lambo. But it's been clubbed away by Corey Jordan there, who hoofs one forward. Might just find Dan Wooden. Dan Wooden, it's a good first touch from the Gosport veteran. Wooden coming forward. Passes a free ball into Harvey Rue, but just too much power on the pass. But still, Harvey Rue doing well to get on the end of it. As he does go down to the floor, the referee doesn't blow up. And Harvey Rue, I'm guessing the former Pompey midfielder, he's just hoping to take as much time as possible. But the referee does blow up for a Gosport corner. And the question is, if you're Gosport right now, do you just try and take as much time as you can? Try and keep it in that left corner flag. That's game management, isn't it? You've still got uh, three and a half minutes of the seven to go. Um, so three minutes now. So, uh, yeah, you've got to be sensible. Don't do anything stupid, you know. You're not... Just, yeah, it's game management. Ultimately, I'll keep saying it. Well, the corner has been taken. It's fizzled all the way back to Tarbuck, around 10 yards away from the halfway line. Now, Rory Williams, he has lost the ball into Alan Lambeau. Now, Barmer, he's coming forward. Can Winchester create one last counter-attack? Smith, in the halfway line, passes out wide into McCormick. Now, out wide into 14, Griggs. Now Barmer coming forward. He's got Alfie Stanley surrounding him. But still Winchester coming forward. Hesitant they're going to get that goal. Griggs out wide into M. Lambo. And Lambo whipping in a ball. And it was just dipping towards. It was dipping just under the goal net. And Toby Stewart, he had to punch it out as it does go out. Oh, that is not what you want to see, is it? Well, I'll tell you well, what, we no, can... at least he got there. Now Cheshire United have actually won I... the league now. They're 4-1 up a harrow. Um, but here... Gosport uh, have got some work to do. This is going to be a brilliant opportunity. Well, the goalkeeper, Kearney's even come up. And the ball has been whipped in towards the far post. And it does find number five, Stuart Mott, who heads it over. And surely that might be game over. But you know what's even worse news? No, 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 no. We can't say that because... Well, the commentator's curse. And Salisbury are ahead. I was going to say, so they found a late goal, we Salisbury. We to do that with Salisbury now leading Basingstoke. We had to do this. And with Tottenham winning as well, it means you, if 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 it finishes this way, that's an if, it's as you were. Win, but, win, 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 win. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. if, if, if. But uh, here we are. We're in the last minute of the seven added now. Well, pending Gosport get this win, we will still be second thanks to goal difference, but we will be on the same points. <coughs> Gosport, we're desperately hoping to secure that win, but the ball is in, currently still in Gosport's half, around 10 yards away from Toby Stewart's goal. It's going to be a throw-in, still Gosport possession though. It's going to be Harry Kavanagh taking this throw-in. Kavanaugh lifting one forward, finding Dan Wooden, who heads it back to Alfie Stanley. But Nolan gets on the end of it. Nolan coming forward, trying to cross the ball. But it's going to be Toby Stewart coming out of his box, just collecting the ball and smothering it. And really hoping <laughs> he's going to take as many seconds possible now, isn't he? We're getting the referee's attention. But yeah, we've got 20 seconds of the seven added minutes. This really is the, yeah, the referee's giving Stewart the come on, hurry up. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, Stewart, he still hasn't even kicked it yet. And now he has kicked it back into the Winchester half. Can Dan Wooden get on the end of it? He heads it back to Alfie Stanley. Seconds left to play here. As King lifts one forward. And it's Zach Sharp being put under pressure by Barmer. And Barmer getting the better of him. Now it's Ashton trying to whip in a ball. Ooh. And there will be one last corner left in this yeah, game. Right. This is Winchester's last, last chance. Because after this, this will be <laughs> over. So, Gosport, one more big effort here to keep them out. Everyone up here for Winchester, even the goalkeeper, Kearney. King with the corner. 
finds them Lambo and it's fizzled out to Barmer. And Barmer goes for a shot and he hits it wide, just wide at the top corner. The referee looks at his whistle and he's got the whistle in his mouth as he blows up. And I don't believe it's full time. I believe it's just one of the players has gone down and it looked horrible challenge on Tarbuck. I think it was just a clash of heads there, but it's not full time yet, is it? No, 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 no. No, he's in he's in serious difficulty there, and um, every physio is currently on the pitch, and I'm not sure. I think the referee may have also blown up for full time. I don't know if he has. <laughs> Unsure whether it's full time here yet at the AEI Stadium. It is game's finished. Oh, we can now confirm it's full time here at the AEI Stadium, and it will be Gosport taking home the three points. Right. A brilliant bank holiday for the Gosport fans. It was two goals in the final 10 minutes from Gosport. The first goal coming from a corner, which saw Alfie Stanley bury home the goal. And with the second goal, it came from Bradley Tarbart, the man currently down injured, as he wrapped his foot around the ball, sending one in the top left corner and giving Gosport the massive three points. And I will run you through some of the other results in the Southern Premier League as both sets of players just congratulate each other. It'd be a tough one to take for the Winchester players, but it's a massive three points for Gosport. And here are all the full-time results in the Southern Premier League. As AFC Totten, they have won 3-0 against Walton and Hersham. Bracknell Town 5, Sholin 1. Didcot Neil Swindon Supermarine 2, Dorchester 2, Tiverton 1. And we've won 2 1 here at the AI Stadium. Harrow have lost 4 1 to Chesham, which does mean Chesham have won the Southern Premier League. So, from everyone here at Gosport, we congratulate um, Chesham. Um, Hayes and Yedden 0, Hendon Town 0, Murphytown Town 3, Hungerford 0, Plymouth 1, Poole Town 0, and Salisbury, they have beaten Basingstoke 2 1. So, Basingstoke, they do us no favours. So, thanks for that, Basingstoke. But either way, it doesn't matter because Gospel, we have collected the three points. And Jeremy, what a game that was in the final couple minutes. We don't like we don't half like doing things the hard the hard way now, mm. don't we? Because you have to give Winchester great credit for their performance this afternoon. Didn't they make us sweat it? Because um, they took the lead, a brilliant bit of individualism from um, from Tommy Wright with that goal, and then Gosport had to work and work. It took all of all of the, the, the guidance from the touchline, the changes to swing the game around. And in the end, two really good goals did the job. Well, exactly that. And in the end, it's proved costly for Gospel because we are now second in the league. So we keep our second league sport on 70 points. But Salisbury, they're also on 70 points. But we do lead on goal difference with a goal difference of 30 and Salisbury on 22. So a difference of eight goals and Salisbury, they're third. AFC Totten, they're on fourth after winning 3 0. And sitting in fifth is Murphy Town after that dominant 3 0 win today. Bracknell, they sit just outside of the playoff spot on 58 points. But it does look ever more likely, Gosport, they're going to secure the playoff position hopefully next right, week. We've got a 12-point gap now between us and Bracknell, the first team outside the playoff places. So they're almost there. But what you've got to look at is the top five have all won their games today. Chesham, champions, congratulations to them. But all the playoff contenders have won. So our win today, turning that around, absolutely priceless. Well, it's a massive win for Gospel, and I'm glad to say it has finished here at the AI Stadium 2-1. Jeremy, you know how to end it. Yep, Final yep. words, up the borough. <laughs>